for recording. Okay, perfect. Well, I guess I'll start it off. So I'm uh, welcome everybody to our public information center for the transportation master plan update with Severn Township. And uh, this is our pick number two, which is uh, the second engagement point with the public. We also had an online survey uh, that was available on our website, and we consistently seek feedback uh, just through our website as well, um, through our email addresses and so on and so forth. So this is a great, great opportunity to engage in the project. Um, look at where we are to date. Um, we have our consultants here, Macintosh Perry. Mohammed's uh, available there. He's going to lead some of the presentation here, Mitchell as well, and so on. And uh, this is an open forum, so although we're in a virtual environment, um, pretend that it's sort of a traditional uh, open house, if you will. We're ready for questions afterwards. We have a 30 minute period for questions, and those questions will be recorded uh, um, and, uh, res and responded to or addressed in the uh, in the draft report. So I welcome Mohammed, uh, Mitchell and Soha and take it from here. OK, thank you, uh, Derek. We uh, again, uh, good afternoon, uh, everyone, and thank you for, uh, for your time uh, attending uh, and uh, uh, joining us, providing input and uh, uh, really uh, for your interest in, uh, in this study. So we really gr greatly appreciate uh, uh, all that. So it's important that uh, uh, you are here uh, to uh, provide your input and share ideas and opinion. And just accepting a couple more. Uh, let's uh, join us just uh, good on, on time. Uh, so uh, before we just move forward, uh, just a couple of the uh, kind of like overview how the, this session, this is a, a virtual public information meeting and uh, uh, we will proceed with presentation. Uh, There's going to be a number of uh, these slides that they were uh, already pre-posted uh, in advance uh, to this meeting. They are the same what is posted on the website. And uh, just uh, kind of like through the, these 20, 20 minutes, 25 minutes that we have kind of like for this presentation, uh, if you can please uh, mute your microphones and uh, uh, so the idea is kind of like we just present. Uh, you you can provide comments on the chats as we go and ask questions, and then we will go uh, through them after the presentation. And uh, would like to highlight that presentation is recorded, as Derek said, uh, same as it was a previous one. Uh, I think there was the question when the first public meeting uh, was. Uh, it was in March this year when we kind of like. Uh, there are two of these public meetings. I will explain a little bit more the process. Uh, and, uh, you know, after the meeting, after the first presentation, we will have questions uh, and answer all of them. And again, it will be second se uh, session uh, when, when we, after this one, uh, we have one more. It's really good uh, interest for this study. Uh, and uh, yeah, when question start period, uh, there is on the top of the screen, you see this small hand. Uh, if you uh, please would like, uh, kind of like just, I will explain that again. You can raise your hand and uh, we would like that you uh, can uh, uh, at least, you know, introduce yourself and say uh, if you would like, you know where and what area uh, you of Severn you are living and your residence, or maybe here, here are some stakeholders or some uh, other interesting interested uh, parties. So everyone is welcome. But uh, please just uh, we don't need to know exactly address address, but at least uh, some small introduction. Okay, thanks, uh, uh, Mitch. Move to the. Uh, we will go through the really some explanation uh, what we are doing this, what is transportation master plan. Some of these, uh, at least a few of them will be kind of like what we already mentioned in previous public meeting and maybe just to provide some uh, uh, explanation in addition to what you've seen based on the slide. Uh, transportation master plan is, uh, as it says, document is the master plan, planning document that it's really looking for the uh, uh, Township or long-term strategy, uh, so really for to look for the planning, uh, for the growth and how to manage that uh, expansion uh, of uh, overall. Uh, we call it these days multimodal transportation system, which means 
uh, we are looking for pretty much uh, uh, in general uh, for the roads, for auto, for active transportation, which means uh, including uh, uh, walking, biking uh, and everything. Uh, transit, it's also part of that multimodal. That's kind of like a little bit more to explain that terminology of multimodal. So this is the plan how uh, municipality uh, mm, it's one of the planning documents would like to uh, have the plans for future growth uh, based on the, on the growth population, employment, and so on. Uh, and uh, it provides really strategic document for the for the municipality to plan some of the uh, future uh, road network uh, and other in line with other documents. Uh, so is. Kind of like uh, we we have to follow the as a transportation master plan uh, phase one and phase two of the master plan process, uh, which is outlined in the by the province. Uh, we call it municipal class environmental assessment, and those what you see in, in bracket. Those are some updates of these when these uh, uh, provincial documents were updated, and uh, which is again approved under Ontario Environmental Assessment Act. So this is the kind of like the process that we follow. That's why you see the, some of these steps. Uh, we will again show that it's public consultation. It's one uh, public consultation or stakeholder, second one, and so on. So all those are steps prescribed in this uh, uh, provincial document for these type of studies. And uh, in this case, for transportation master plans, uh, it's prescribed a minimum of two points of contact with public and stakeholders. So. This input, it's, it's really the important. So this is our second public meeting. And again, as Derek said, uh, this input or communication between uh, uh, interested parties, stakeholders, residents never stop during the study. It doesn't have to be just this public meeting. You can contact us at any time during the study, before the meeting, after the meeting, call us, email, everything. Uh, any input, uh, uh, it's, it's welcome. We will consider and uh, listen. Uh, next step. So a little bit about this process again. It's really important for us to explain this, and you probably seen this way if you uh, attended first meeting. So the uh, those are steps. Uh, we have the the study uh, transportation master plan for the seven. We can like have it two phases of the of, the, of our study following those phases of uh, kind of like a municipal class CA. What what I mentioned. In first phase and pre uh, first phase of the study, uh, we, when we started, we really look, uh, you know, uh, what municipality and what this uh, undertaking. It's what is there, what are the issues, problems, or opportunity. That's kind of like how we call it uh, in technical terms. Then we start gathering uh, all information, background. Uh, previous transportation master plan was uh, done. So what is done? Other planning documents, uh, issues, and everything. Uh, uh, existing conditions. So then we identify, you know, uh, as uh, what are those opportunities and challenges. Uh, it's not only one. So we look all all those what we said multimodal. It's uh, uh, to look as as a, as a package as we go uh, that needs to be addressed as uh, municipality grows and uh, looking for the for the future plans. In phase two, uh, when we assess all those existing and look for the potential uh, uh, different type of issues or opportunities, then we look for what are those potential solutions. And we will present a little bit about these solutions. And uh, then we look, you know, what is how we evaluate these solutions. There are technical, some criteria that we go through to evaluate them. Uh, you know, those are technical, social, uh, cost, and so on, environmental. So those are again criteria that we evaluate based before we say this is you know uh, recommended for this improvement or these changes. So we went through this uh, evaluation. Uh, as I said, important is uh, in, in on top of everything, it's also cost involved. And uh, at the end of this is kind of like development uh, strategy, how it will be in, uh, implemented over the time. Uh, in in general, we are here. Uh, what we said, we are here. It's public information meeting uh, number two. Uh, we pretty much kind of like uh, went through the, all those steps in phase one and phase two of this study. And after this meeting, uh, again, uh, it's not done. We have to uh, obtain this input and uh, look all those technical work, what was done, what was uh, previous meetings, 
and comments and input, then we will start or started working on, on draft uh, document and uh, really look what, what is the best recommendation for the municipality uh, to carry forward for different type of, uh, of uh, improvements, implementation in phases, uh, based on cost and based on uh, everything. And uh, so that's the, the, the transportation master plan and that will be presented to the council. And that's pretty much kind of like overview of the whole uh, the entire study. So again, uh, Severn had the transportation master plan previously. And this is kind of like, again, we always speak not only us, that's the process. And this will not be the last transportation master plan that the municipality will have. Uh, there will be again another one. Typically, these transportation master plans are done typically every five, uh, you know, six years and so on. So this is the planning document that again will be updated and uh, uh, refined and so on, which is kind of like uh, uh, parallel with other planning documents, official plans and so on. Uh, next. So engagement, uh, we mentioned that a couple of times. So we had it uh, a previous meeting. We received couple, uh, some inputs uh, after meetings, before the meetings. Uh, there are, uh, in, in these comments engagements are from the public, but they're also from uh, other stakeholders. It can be interested parties. There are, uh, you know, uh, Ministry of Transportation. There is a, a county. There are different uh, there are developers, there is consultants that work for different uh, uh, parties. So uh, everyone has uh, or can provide input and comment. Uh, and the uh, notice was advertised or published two times. And it's uh, this is for the this one, PIC2. If you go there, you will find all uh, links uh, for the first public meeting. And also I know someone asked when was the first one. Uh, from this link, you can also get to the uh, presentation boards, same like this one, what was done and, uh, or presented at uh, first uh, meeting. And there is also a recording of the first uh, public meeting. Next slide. And uh, so we would like just to summarize key of these comments, what you received during that first meeting. And it's, uh, you know, uh, when we say here again, we've just put few here because it was if some of you attended the first one, if you remember some of these comments, again, when we said that we highlighted key of, uh, comments here, they're not all here. Uh, again, this is just for presentation, for meeting, for discussion. Uh, all these details uh, and these comments will be in, as part of that uh, transportation master plan document uh, draft and final. So this is just kind of like highlight. And when we say here addressed in TMP, it's not kind of like that we really went there and you know, said it's uh, it's going to be done this way or that way. It's just that we listen, we consider, we hear this, and we kind of like uh, take it. That's the input. We look that when we look for the options, uh, alternative solutions. So we, we hear this comment, and it was important comment or recommendation or whatever it is when we look the after PAC going through this evaluation, we, we that's why we said it's addressed because kind of like we, we we look into this comment during our work after PAC. Uh, some comments are about you know sidewalks near uh, Manoki Beach Road uh, because of the recreation center. Again, we will not go through this the, every single answer, but it's just some of summary of the comments. And uh, some comments were about the uh, need for trail. Uh, along uh, in near Menoki Beach Road, uh, you know, that can uh, uh, enhance safe transportation for the people walking. Uh, primary settlement areas like Cold Water and West Shore will have any, uh, uh, will have new developments in the future. How we plan to address the road traffic will be adjusted. And so those are all really good comments, good input, good discussion. There was a lot of uh, good discussion uh, and first meetings. So, uh, you know, there is a, uh, we recognize uh, safety concern. There is a lot of you know, the trucks in the area. So there were some discussion about that one. And, uh, and you know, definitely we went there uh, on the site. Uh, our uh, project team uh, actually uh, one day, uh, entire day with Derek uh, was with us. 
uh, through the entire township. Uh, we we did a site visit uh, through the well, entire township and with Derek. Yeah. So just some of the the comments. Uh, public engagement. The ob objective it was mentioned is to update the uh, uh, public on the process on the where we are. Uh, again, invite you as I said. Uh, any feedback, uh, uh, what you learned so far, what you seen on these slides here, and again, what we will uh, um, have conversation, and uh, anything else that you maybe didn't have opportunity to bring uh, so far, and uh, anything else to recommend uh, what you've seen so far on the plans, uh, again, and uh, just your recommendation for the community for uh, for the uh, you know uh, for the study uh, in in general and uh, we will be here to answer questions about the study and uh, uh, everything what you see here again you will not see everything on these slides there will be the report uh, that is kind of like uh, in general will cover the entire uh, study and all details Uh, we would like just to mention this uh, uh, official plan update. Why we are mentioning it? I mentioned that transportation master plan is just another uh, planning document in addition to many others that uh, uh, township uh, uh, is uh, typically uh, undertaking, updating, and so on. Transportation master plan is the one piece that it's always uh, good to have, kind of like the uh, at the same time or the best time if it's possible the same update when it's official plan update so transportation um, uh, is component or transportation master plan is component of official plan update so and it's not only transportation master plan so official plan is the wider document looking for the uh, the whole other planning uh, or the entire township so uh, transportation master plan is uh, a really good timing for this update that can fill fit with some recommendations to be included in the official plan update under transportation section. So uh, if you didn't know, uh, Township of Severn is uh, undergoing updates of its official, official plan, and uh, it's there are some uh, open houses uh, coming these days with regard to the uh, official plan. So we really recommend you visit uh, and look on the website or ask uh, uh, towns, township staff for more details, but here are details if you would like to uh, be involved there. Uh, but again, it's really important. Both documents are extremely important, and uh, it's really good to see that they are uh, kind of like going at the same time to update. So it's opportunity. What you learn here, if you would like to attend and provide input with regard to the official plan update. Yeah. And uh, just let's be more accept more people are joining us. I'm very happy to see a lot of people today. And uh, again, this is really some of the, I, I'm, I'm sure I mentioned already what are goals and objectives of the uh, transportation master plan. It's uh, look for the multimodal uh, improvements and the, uh, how to accommodate township uh, plans for the growth based on, on the overall growth of population, overall uh, long-term growth of the employment. And uh, it's not only kind of like just to look for, uh, you. we can't look at any planning document uh, these days just for township. There are, uh, mm, uh, these planning documents are extremely important, how uh, they fit into uh, uh, county, regional, provincial plans and documents. So. Uh, these goals or objectives to the some level have to uh, be in line or kind of like follow how province grows, how the region grows, or how they planning their improvements. So these documents, transportation master plans are important to have them as plan of uh, other uh, uh, kind of like regional or uh, county or uh, <clears throat> other cities in the or the neighboring municipalities uh, plans. Mm. Next slide. And those are growth trends. We just would like, kind of like, uh, to highlight a little bit uh, how these growths are, uh, you know, in the area, for the Greater uh, Toronto area, Greater Golden Horseshoe, uh, for the again uh, township, but uh, also linked to the Simcoe County 
uh, as you can see, uh, by 2051, it's uh, approaching to almost uh, 900 or 1 million people, uh, including uh, City and Aurelia. So it's approximately 1.5% um, growth per annum, uh, in, in continued growth for the next 29 uh, nine years. And most municipalities these days uh, uh, that uh, are planning those growth and those kind of like, uh, uh, forecasts are going these days to 2051. So that's again, industry practice uh, 2041, 51, and how these growths are. Uh, as you can see here, you see uh, all those uh, local are around seven uh, growths uh, by each of these county or municipality. Uh, so that's what we would like just kind of like uh, move to the next step uh, <clears throat> back to that growth. What we looked uh, applying that growth, how we typically do through the this study, uh, as we assess those existing uh, conditions and all those plans growth uh, based on all those growth that we just kind of like uh, uh, saw that uh, region entire it grows. Uh, we uh, you know adapted this 1.5. Uh, for the study purposes for uh, in general for what is there uh, in the in the township uh, to see how the, that growth will be uh, over the years uh, number of years to 2041 uh, you know uh, will impact uh, existing uh, condition existing road network uh, what is the plan for the growth based on that uh, to accommodate that and uh, so we went through the process uh, we kind of started with traffic, but again, we will see through the study, we look also for those, what we call active transportation and some others uh, based on what we are talking here. It's uh, annual daily traffic. It's what municipality uh, has, the township has, and uh, those volumes uh, as, as existing, we apply that growth over the years to see uh, are there issues with capac capacity, are there issues or uh, need for improvement, uh, uh, some of these we will present later. Uh, just a little bit of those technical terms, how we did it and what typically we do for this transportation master plans for kind of like this you know, smaller municipality level. We did those kind of like screen line analysis. Uh, it's in, in really, uh, as you can see, we are showing here those in, in purple. Those are screen lines that we really look for entire township how traffic or how people or how uh, uh, everything is moving uh, uh, north, south, east, uh, west through the those major uh, corridors. So just that we can see you know, where these uh, travels are kind of like uh, moving around. Uh, with this screen line, uh, we look uh, to best to cover entire township to see those existing uh, volumes existing conditions, existing issues. And that was kind of like the process that we went through the, uh, to look for the capacity uh, to apply that growth. Uh, some of these roads or, or major corridor will need and what type of improvement will need. Uh, so it's just kind of like the terminology that we do uh, and the techniques through the traffic assessment. Uh, we also look uh, as part of, of this transportation master plan, uh, we look uh, uh, together with, with uh, uh, township, uh, those key, uh, some of the areas uh, that they have uh, kind of like the township or based on, on our study already have some kind of like operational concerns, operation issues, safety issues, uh, you know, intersections. Uh, potential uh, opportunity or need for, uh, if it's warranted, uh, for traffic control uh, uh, changes, if it's maybe stop signs to uh, see if it's warranted based on industry standards and guidelines and that it's now uh, capacities are there or safety concerns or collisions that needs to be, for example, signalized. So we look at a number of these locations across township, uh, again, in coordination with, uh, with the township uh, for these uh, intersections and assess them in a little bit more details to see what potential uh, 
mm, kind of like improvements are required or maybe they are still performing well but getting close for uh, some improvements to be monitored and so on so uh, all these details will be as part of, of study uh, and in report but we just brought it here that we'll look few of these for example division road and burnside lane and we will have a little bit more details after through the presentation about that yeah uh, as always, we are looking uh, through the safety for the uh, entire corridor. So we uh, look uh, at the beginning of the study, uh, just kind of like a collision history. Uh, what are uh, in regards to those locations that I uh, highlighted? If there are some corridors or intersections or area that they have significant uh, number of collisions, then we look at a little bit more details. What type of collisions or to try to learn through the collision reports uh, what is causing those uh, reports so that municipality or we can recommend at this stage uh, mm, or maybe further studies to see what can be improved uh, to make it more safe and to reduce or eliminate these collisions so we look collision analysis uh, again uh, as you can see uh, again don't be of those it's it's normal as you can see uh, you know uh, highway 11 uh, that corridor has a little bit more collisions, but again, it's it's higher uh, level of the road, more vehicles and so on. So uh, part of assessment was also we look for the collision uh, and to improve some safety. Uh, growth, um, what is the kind of like growth? Is it really growth of, uh, we all know that's kind of like a, a township is or rural community and growth of urbanization, but also we also see that the uh, uh, township is growing. There are new developments, uh, so uh, more people uh, is moving to the township, but it's kind of like natural uh, uh, how to uh, anticipate and how to accommodate that growth. And uh, in the township, it's well known, and that's the, the you know, the fact uh, uh, aggregate area. It's uh, a lot of aggregate uh, production uh, in the in the township it's gonna continue to be key economic uh, driver uh, for the township uh, so so we we look and as you can see uh, all those areas all those corridors uh, uh, you know to see um, those aggregate uh, routes uh, um, there is a lot of heavy vehicle traffic are there issues are there some changes are there some potential recommendations for uh, look for these corridors as municipality grows, uh, you know, new areas are coming more, or kind of like call it urbanized, more people living in this area. Is there time maybe to change some of these? But so we look also aggregate production, these corridors. And uh, as I mentioned, uh, uh, those uh, uh, active transportation, uh, we look uh, as, uh, you know, municipality townships is growing. There is more need uh, for those safe, uh, uh, pedestrian, uh, cyclist uh, activities and how to accommodate that, how to make them uh, safe and how to make those uh, connections. If there are somewhere, are there some missing links, how can we uh, or what can be recommended to connect some of these? Uh, it's not just a connection, maybe some missing signage. So it's also some, uh, in your community is there also, that there are some tourists are coming. So different type of improvements can be done also for this active transportation. Uh, uh, network. Uh, I did mention um, after we look for those existing condition and all those things, the process through these uh, phases of the study, we have to look uh, as described by that, uh, that municipal document. Typically, we look and like you know what will be or how it will be uh, for that 2041 or these future years if really it's do nothing. It's just kind of like benchmark that we, as part of these studies, we always look as a do nothing, uh, as a status quo, just to compare with uh, other uh, alternatives. Uh, a solution is also, uh, you know, uh, how that the growth will, uh, will uh, really uh, impact if uh, these um, improvements are not happening. And also some of the alternatives or solutions that we uh, look at, uh, uh, some road network improvements. Uh, we, we call it here, kind of like that's pretty much where uh, township is. Uh, 
focus on, on local traffic uh, uh, operations improvements. Uh, so look for some of these gaps based on some capacity that may have issues in the future to improve some of the road network and uh, keep improving these. Uh, I mentioned those aggregate hull uh, routes uh, for aggregate pro production. If there are uh, some issues with those or uh, as, as community growth. And uh, some of these roads, as I mentioned, uh, uh, as there is more of this active transportation. So what can be that uh, the done that the uh, township can improve some of these, as I mentioned, maybe some sidewalks or some uh, trails, some connection and so on. Uh, we, we did look for the, you know, another uh, solution as part of, of, of study. You know, the multimodal network strategy and we kind of like recognize uh, township, uh, uh, it's not there yet. It's not kind of like really uh, mm, so much urban area that, you know, we, we have to uh, or, you know, it's a smaller population, smaller growth that have to focus uh, heavily on the transit and so on. So there is transit, there is everything. It's, you know, it's it's, it's coming in the area or moving the, to, toward the township. But I, I think uh, uh, we, we really recommend the road network strategy can like those focus investment on local traffic uh, would be kind of like for some time preferred. Uh, and in the future, as I said, as it grows, uh, there is that multimodal component, but uh, it's not urbanized area yet to that level to focus more on alternative four. But we, we did look that too. Next slide, uh, Mitch. And uh, those are, I mentioned those criteria, uh, you know, how we can like look what potential recommendation or how we really evaluate those uh, solutions, what criteria. Uh, it is always we look transportation, uh, you know, how to move people, uh, connections, uh, improve connections for uh, uh, local residents from surrounding municipalities, uh, between other municipalities, county, uh, enhance active transportation facilities, uh, you know, provide diversity of travel choice uh, as much as possible. Uh, there are completely new area now, you know, there is all those. Uh, maybe township is not yet there, but there are, you know, there's uh, more electrical cars, more car sharing, more so on. So we look for everything that we, when we say transportation policy. Uh, I mentioned those importance of provincial, regional, or other policies in the area. Uh, Simcoe County Provincial uh, Official Plan uh, that was also mentioned, economic feasibility, uh, how it can be uh, done, you know, uh, the cost, how to implement this. Uh, so the cost is uh, very important to look up with all those. Who's going to pay for that? And again, so that's also part for the, some of these recommendations or into consideration. Environmental, it's always looked, that's why it's called to follow uh, environmental uh, assessment process. So any of these improvements, recommendations, or anything through the evaluation, we look what is the impact on the environment and how it can be minimized with any of for potential improvement and the uh, uh, impact on the natural environment. And uh, so <clears throat> climate change impact or anything. And socioeconomic uh, environmental. So look for future population growth uh, opportunities uh, and what is the plan. So those are really criteria when you look all those, you know, what's recommended, how we went through this, uh, and those are typical steps for this type of uh, studies. Next slide, I think, uh, Mitch, uh, I will pass now to Mitch to take us through the Mitch from uh, our uh, project team for some of these, uh, you know, uh, recommendations based on all those what I mentioned, uh, what did we look and how we get to the, uh, what you see here. All right, uh, thanks Mohammed. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, so moving forward with our preferred alternative, the road network strategy, um, we've identified a number of road network improvements and modifications uh, primarily consist of new roads, road widening, surface type upgrades, and local improvements like uh, signalization. Um, so the map on the left here, it just shows a high level overview of the recommendations that we're providing, as well as some of the uh, planned new roads as part of future developments. So regarding the um, specific recommendations that we're providing uh, within this TMP, um, there's a number of intersections that currently or will warrant uh, signalization. 
Um, so the intersection of Sturgeon Bay Road at Coldwater Road, um, we expect this will warrant traffic signals by the year 2031. Um, the intersection of Burnside Line at uh, Division Road, um, this intersection currently um, already warrants traffic signals. And we've also recommended a, a, mid, a pedestrian mid-block crossing um, within the vicinity of uh, Coldwater Public School. Um, this would just allow for safer, uh, safer pedestrian crossings uh, at Gray Street without uh, significantly impacting, uh, impacting traffic. So currently within the town, uh, the township, there's a number of uh, dead end roads, uh, specifically within the West Shore area and the Minoki Beach Road area. Um, so we're recommending um, new road segments that would connect these dead end roads. Um, so Bayer Road would connect to Amigo Drive. Um, Amigo Drive would connect to Wood Avenue. Uh, Minoki Beach Road would connect to Thompson Crescent. And Cox Drive would connect to Hawkins Drive. Um, we're also recommending uh, the extension of West Street uh, within Coldwater up to County Road 17. Um, we identified um, a few uh, roadway segments um, which are currently uh, have granular surfaces, but uh, based on the volume of traffic, they're warranted for upgrades to uh, hard surfaces. Um, so Laughlin Falls Road uh, between Taylor Line and Upper Big Shoot Road and uh, Machadash Street at County Road 16. Um, the lane is currently a two way roadway. Um, however, it's relatively narrow with uh, only a five meter right of way. Um, so we're recommending um, adjusting it to a one way street and maintaining uh, northbound traffic. Um, in terms of road widening, um, we're recommending widening Gray Street uh, just to facil facilitate um, on street parking and a bike lane uh, near River Street. We're also recommending widening of Michael Ann Drive and Gill Street just to facilitate uh, cross section urbanization and sidewalks. Um, one significant uh, modification that we're recommending that would require quite a bit of consultation with the MTO um, is realigning Highway 11 uh, between New Bailey Line and South Sparrow Lake Road and providing a service road uh, to access West Shore. Um, so currently there's quite a few right in right out accesses off of the freeway into West Shore. Um, typically we want to avoid accesses like this uh, just for safety reasons. So really realigning um, Highway 11 and providing the service road would allow for uh, safer access to, uh, to West Shore. So um, currently the township doesn't have any emergency detour routes uh, and the road network is fairly limited in uh, terms of where we could uh, recommend them. Um, we did identify one route for Highway 11 um, that would be along uh, Agony Road between South Sparrow Lake Road and Shoreview Drive. So one of the primary goals of this TMP is really to look for ways to um, separate heavy vehicle traffic um, from the rest of traffic and especially uh, pedestrian traffic. Um, so currently within the town, there's already a number of uh, north-south um, haul routes um, and only one uh, east-west haul route, which is along Cambrian Road. Um, so we looked at a number of options uh, for providing an additional east-west route um, into Highway 12. So we looked at Warminster Road, um, we looked at Division Road, Division Road to Fairgrounds Road, um, but there's quite a few drawbacks uh, with these options. So the preferred option that we identified was a new uh, east-west haul route on Thornburn Road um, between Nelson and Highway 12. Um, so this would uh, require um, building a new uh, new road between Wayman Line and Highway 12. And uh, it would also require a building within the, the township of Oromandante. Um, so moving on to active transportation. Um, active transportation uh, simply just refers to um, any active mode of travel, so primarily walking and cycling. Um, active transportation, it's still a, a significant focus of this TMP um, with our, our goal of connecting the primary settlement areas um, and to uh, the Utah Trail. Um, so we've proposed a number of active transportation network improvements um, based on a review of the existing township active transportation facilities. Um, anticipated future growth, um, identifying key locations such as schools, community centers, employment hubs, um, commercial areas, and recreational slash tourism areas, 
and also identifying all existing and potential future uh, gaps in the active transportation network. So for on-road cycling, um, these facilities can vary depending on the roadways, uh, traffic volume, um, operating speeds, and also its environment, whether it's urban or rural. Um, so for rural roads, typically we're looking at paved shoulders, um, buffered paved shoulders, or just signed bike routes. Um, for urban areas, we'd be looking at conventional uh, bike lanes. So that would just be a lane for a, a, cycle, a bicycle. Um, so this map here just shows our recommended on-road uh, on cycling network. Um, it's a combination of signed bike routes, um, paved shoulders, and a few uh, uh, dedicated bicycle lanes. Um, so the primary uh, signed bike route um, was developed by MTO as part of the province-wide cycling network. Um, so it would essentially run along Cambrian Road from the Utah Trail to South Sparrow Lake Road, um, and then also to County Road 52 and out of the township and then also along Carolyn Line uh, down to Division Road. So for paved shoulders, um, recommending uh, Division Road from Wayman Line um, to the Telford Line overpass, Souls Road, and then up to Minoki Beach Road. Um, we're also recommending paved shoulders along Carolyn Line um, south of Division Road uh, to Brody Drive, and then an off-road bike path and sidewalk on a new road connection from uh, Burnside Line into the city of Aurelia. Uh, within cold water, um, we're looking at um, conventional bike lanes along Sturgeon Bay Road, um, starting at the uh, Utah Trail access point uh, to River Street and then on to uh, Gray Street, and then also along uh, cold water road. Um, we're also recommending signed bike, uh, a signed bike route along River Street, um, north up to County Road 17, and then Quarry Road, which would be a um, paved shoulder. Um, up to St. Amart Road, which would then again be assigned bike route uh, out to the out of the township. And then in Washago, um, we're recommending a conventional bike lane on Muskoka Street through the sort of um, main uh, commercial area. And then for the remainder of Muskoka Street, it would be a paved shoulder up to County Road 52. So for the off-road uh, component of the active transportation network, um, this would primarily include sidewalks and multi-use pathways. So um, we identified a number of uh, locations that would benefit from the added safety provided by sidewalks, um, and we based it off of a, a priority system. So high priority areas uh, were um, areas with higher than average number of vulnerable road users. So within the vicinity of schools, trails, community centers, and commercial areas. Um, medium priority areas, uh, these are areas with pedestrian activity. Um, in the vicinity of higher traffic volume roads, and then low priority areas were areas with pedestrian activity, um, but lower traffic volume roads. So looking at uh, cold water, there's currently already a number of existing sidewalks. Um, we are recommending a number of new ones um, on the north side of Sturgeon Bay Road from the Utah Trail to River Street, um, along Brick, uh, Brick Pond Road, Wiley Street, um, George Street, Mike Land Drive, Shaw Street, and then on Gill Street, um, the sidewalks shown here and this multi-use pathway, these are part of a, a planned future development. Um, but we're also um, we're also recommending uh, extending the Utah Trail um, along Fire Hall Lane up to Gray Street as a multi-use path. So the Utah Trail uh, through Coldwater is um, discontinuous. There's an access point on Surgeon Bay Road. And then another one um, on just south of Gray Street off of Fire Hall Lane. Um, so there's no easy way to get from uh, this access to this access if you're on a bike or you're walking. So what we're recommending um, is realigning the trail um, to continue uh, based off of this old alignment of the trail. Um, however, this would require uh, purchasing um, a property of land here um, at the intersection of River Street and Gray Street. Uh, so West Shore, we're also recommending a number of um, sidewalks, uh, primarily on Lakeside Drive and Bayou Road, um, with some sidewalks on Highview Avenue and Coronation Avenue, just within the vicinity of the school here. Um, we're also recommending a multi-use pathway uh, from Grand Tamarack Crescent um, south to Minoki Beach Road. Um, part of this trail would be part of a, a, a development. Um, 
And then just to the north of West Shore, we're also proposing another multi-use pathway um, that would run along Goldstein Road, Beatty Road, and then up to uh, South Sparrow Lake Road, um, connecting to, uh, again, another planned um, development multi-use uh, pathway. So for Marshmont, um, we're recommending multi-use pathways along uh, Wayman Line and then Division Road connecting up to uh, Wayman Line, uh, just within the vicinity of the school here. Uh, Marchmont Road, we're recommending sidewalks uh, that would connect to the existing sidewalks, um, and then same with Town Line sidewalks uh, running north up to Marchmont Road. Um, just to the south, uh, we're recommending sidewalks along Confederation Drive, um, north up to Division Road. So for Wachego, um, recommending sidewalks on Hamilton Street, um, and then just uh, continuing the, the existing uh, sidewalk network on Muskoka Street south down to County Road 169 uh, to Quentin Street and south to the existing uh, park that's here. So I will turn it back over to Mohammed. Thanks, Mitch. Uh, uh, I, I see a lot of questions and uh, we're just kind of like we are almost close to the kind of like finished presentation, but I just would like to kind of like a little bit to go back uh, what Mitch uh, uh, was presenting. You probably hear a lot uh, recommending and benefits. It's just like to put kind of like in, in perspective so that understanding uh, everything what, what kind of like we say it's recommending. It's, it's, uh, it's um, this is all study uh, in the progress or, or uh, it's planning study. So uh, uh, as part of study, uh, we uh, some of these improvements or recommendations are uh, uh, are the, at the planning stage. That uh, you know everything has to be considered further as uh, as as study goes or for the, uh, individual studies. Uh, but it's very important to understand those what we say uh, uh, benefits. So there are some benefits for the connectivity, some benefits kind of like for the. Uh, to see some of these as I was talking about planning. So the township has to do this planning process uh, in line with other plannings uh, in the area uh, in uh, to have these plans or to consider them uh, to document to them that they were considered or that they so for the potential everything there is always question how uh, all these recommendation improvements who is going to pay it uh, and when or do we need that. So, but it's important to to study that and see and uh, to see uh, what can be implemented and how uh, you know there are some of these studies that uh, uh, needs to be further studies to consider. Maybe we'll never proceed. Uh, there, are some of these implementation may be attached or considered to some development uh, development charges. Some again, uh, it's important to identify them as needed or consider. Uh, municipality or I mean township can go for some funding from the province from the region. So if they are not uh, identified, uh, some of these you may agree uh, very well uh, that they are really needed to improve the sidewalks or whatever. Uh, but if they are not identified uh, here or, or in the study, uh, it's hard to go and process to the next step. How to build it? How to look for the funds? How to plan for them? So. This is the study, as is the uh, kind of like planning study. So it's not that uh, township will just go uh, or anyone build everything in five years, or it's really gonna be done. So it's really important to understand that there's a lot of recommendations. Uh, they may be uh, that you agree with them or disagree, but it's everything is the planning and for consideration. So it's it's good to to see that kind of like we we have different comments and understanding of that. Back to the role classification here, uh, and uh, we recognize that you know township is more rural uh, area, uh, so part of this transportation uh, master plan study is really to look. We mentioned those policies, so what is the industry standard guidelines? We show here on the right side, small. It's Transportation Association of, of Canada. Uh, so it's good time now that municipality uh, or whenever we are doing transportation masters plans to see uh, what uh, how to classify these roads that they are in line with industry so that they are in line, let's say, with, with the neighboring municipality or county uh, terminology and how these roads are kind of like uh, 
you know, we typically call the, that's the industry again, those are arterial roads, collector roads, local roads, uh, and there are some different categories, but it's very important as part of this study um, that uh, uh, township uh, uh, adapt one terminology. It's not only for this study, but it's important that that terminology is uh, used in official plan, it's a road needs study, so that uh, other documents, other studies and future documents have that uh, described, uh, adapted. So this road is arterial, this is collector, this is local. So it's very straightforward for, for any other study, for any other uh, document. So that's kind of like, we look also, what uh, what is there existing? Uh, most of these, as I said, are, are rural, uh, local roads so far identified. They may stay that way, but it's also important to see, you know, some roads based on the growth or capacity we make and like the adapt to call it collectors. It's very straightforward what is collector. Typically, uh, township has those local or collectors. High level roads are probably arterials by county and so on. So we we'll look to that and it will be described uh, in, in the transportation master plan it's from the policy side. Sorry. Go ahead, Mitch. And uh, yeah, some recommendations again, uh, as I said, because of uh, how we classified those uh, roads called uh, uh, collector arterial is based on the volumes, based on the right of way, based on as this road has sidewalk or doesn't have sidewalk. So those are all standard uh, industry standards that we went through and recommended a couple of these. Again, we recommended uh, uh, changes for the township to uh, adapt and to make those changes for a couple of these roads to call it arterial or, uh, or collector uh, so that it may that can like fit more into industry uh, requirements. Oh, go back to the cost. Uh, road network strategy uh, cost. Those are really, again, this is the planning study, planning uh, document, and we are still working on everything. Uh, and I mentioned those how uh, a township can uh, you know afford to pay this or whatever it's moved forward or identified in transportation master plan or other documents, how to uh, look for these funds. It's phases or how to work with the developers and how it doesn't mean that uh, now uh, uh, residents will pay for every single recommendations or future improvement. It is. Uh, document that identified needs for improvements and for future uh, studies and to have it identified for, as I said, for potential funds somewhere else, or some of these may not uh, be identified as potential accommodation. Some of them were already identified in the previous TMP, but it's good to have them and work on them and to see what can be moved forward to the capital plans and uh, be done, uh, some of these. And again, this is the planning study. All those cost estimates are really high level cost estimates. Yeah. And from here, uh, you know, we are here to listen. There is a lot of comments and we are here to listen uh, all, all of them and go through and uh, really to, uh, you know, uh, see what are preferred uh, options from here, solutions, look uh, a little bit more in the cost estimate, uh, opportunities, cost sharing, uh, changes to development uh, charges. It's again, developers are on one side. So what of these can be, uh, you know, uh, looked. And developers also take this document, transportation master plans, when they look to come to the township for development. And they like, uh, you know, they have their planners and look, oh, it's already identified this, this improvement or this road or whatever, so that they already can see that it's identified so that they can count for potential cost sharing. So it's that's why it's important to have this transportation master plan or any planning document for, for the to look for the funds or for imp uh, implementation. And this will be all documented in the uh, TMP uh, draft. And uh, I think uh, somewhere in November is planned to, to finish uh, everything. I think that's where we are. Uh, but, uh, I think now we uh, pretty much we can go through the comments and uh, uh, there's a lot of comments or we can go one by one and kind of people would like to speak. Uh, feedback, as I said, uh, please provide it here or the emails or through the after meetings. So there are details <laughs> here and uh, yeah, thank you again. Uh, Derek, I will just pass to you for the seconds. 
and uh, we can start going through the comments and you know uh, the people can ask questions thank you very much yes so thanks everybody and uh, thanks Mohammed and Mitch for uh, for the presentation so I think probably the best way to approach this is we have your written comment on the right there um, and we'll definitely incorporate that into the comment registry but we'll go with the hand approach I see the first hand here is Cindy um, so we'll kind of do a, an approach where the hand comes up we'll, I'll try to remember who came up next and we'll call your name we can have a discussion um, there is only limited amount of time about 30 minutes or so um, so once we get into some of the conversations we'll have to get hopefully everybody a chance to speak but um, yeah so we'll start there so Cindy if you'd like to start sure can you hear me I can Okay, great. Thanks. Thanks for uh, your presentation and for allowing us to provide our feedback. I was a little concerned at the beginning uh, because we had no notification of this, uh, the residents of Amigo Drive, um, in terms of the first presentation that you had. And um, so we would have been probably a part of this process much earlier on. Um, as you know from my emails and uh, some of our comments, um, we went through the similar study in 2009 and provided a lot of feedback at that time. And in speaking with many of the residents at this point in time, we still have major issues with the connections that are proposed between Amigo and Bayou, as well as Amigo and Thompson. Um, I know that you said that you addressed this in the, uh, the TMP, that um, someone went out to the actual site. And if they were on Amigo Drive in particular, they would see that it's made of asphalt or it, it's not paved. It's a very narrow, and as I mentioned in my comments, winding road with very few sight lines on it. Um, and it's very, very, very local traffic just for the residents. And many of them are seasonal residents. And uh, even at this time, when we walk out to Minoki Beach Road along um, Amigo Drive, as well as on Minoki Beach Road, it's extremely dangerous. And that's only with the additional housing that has been um, completed on Minoki Beach at this time. We are constantly jumping off to the side. People are racing, literally. It's a very long street, Minoki Beach especially, uh, road. And it's a dangerous situation where we are constantly feeling like we're going to be hit by cars. There are no sidewalks, there are no walkways, absolutely nothing available for us. And given that this is just a small amount of traffic from the uh, building so far, connecting these routes serves no purpose whatsoever because even with a small community center that's going up near that um, community, um, the there are other ways to get people to a community center rather than going along a small winding road that's narrow and doesn't have the proper infrastructure. Um, we're not opposed to providing places for people to bike through and possibly pedestrians to walk over between Bayou and, and uh, Amigo Drive and, and maybe emergency vehicles, but allowing for other traffic to come through there would even increase the danger that we face regularly on that road, um, as well as considering the cost that it would take to possibly widen, add sidewalks, whatever it may be, uh, that should be a consideration. Um, so we're very, very concerned with those recommendations. Um, and there is a piece of property between Thompson and Amigo Drive um, that would have to be a consideration as well. And I think my sister will, will speak to that. So we're, our main concern is the safety uh, for the residents and for future residents in the area. And we think that there are other ways to get to Minoki Beach Road rather than crossing through a small uh, winding road that is for very few locals in the area. Mm. And, and sorry, just if I could add, I did send you the information that um, the reports that we provided back in 2009, 2010, and we're hoping you can refer to those. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Sorry, and, and I think I went to respond there and I was on mute. Uh, still, right. still getting used to this virtual world we live in. Um, yeah, so we will not necessarily be able to provide a direct response at this time, but obviously we'll uh, take those comments and uh, and actually the recent uh, submitted res report there from 2010 and include them uh, in our study and in the comment registry. Um, I think there's a lot of uh, good value in, in these comments. So 
Um, yep, we do appreciate that. Thank you very much. And, and sorry, Derek, one more thing. If I could also say a lot of the land around there is EPA land. We constantly have turtles crossing our road. We have a heron, a number of herons in the area, etc. A lot of wildlife. And already we find some dead on the road. So I can't even imagine what would happen with increased traffic in the area. Yeah, thank you very much. Okay. And I think the next up was uh, Robin. Yeah, hi, can you hear me? Yeah, I can. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So Robin Seligman and I have a property on Amigo Beach Road and I own the land actually in between um, uh, Amigo and Wood. Cindy referred to Thompson, but it's actually Wood Avenue. <clears throat> There's a connector, so um, very familiar with the area. We Just to let you know, the background, most of the people that are cottagers and now new residents on Amigo, the, the original residents, we've all been there, and there's most of us are the original residents, have been there for 60 plus years. There's new families moving in, there's a lot of young children, but there's nowhere to grow on Amigo. Like it's, it's all, it's a beach called Amigo Beach. Uh, all the lots are taken. So it's not like there's gonna be new construction or new development and new places going up there. So it does not make any sense at all to connect Bayou and um, Amigo and then Amigo and Wood um, as a transportation route. It would be for other people that are not connected to our areas. And these are country winding um, roads that are not set up for heavy vehicle traffic. Um, they're dead end segments and they have, um, all of them have poor horizontal alignment with many curves and sight distances. So we don't have a problem with connecting maybe Bayou to Amigo with a, for a bike path um, or a pedestrian path, that would be fine. Um, I don't know how you're going to be connecting um, Amigo to wood because you'd have to expropriate land. Um, there are no sidewalks. There's no reason to connect those routes because the main road that should be bringing people into the area would be in Minoki, which is where there's, uh, which is right off the highway, which is um, the, the bigger road where there was supposed to be trails and um, proper protection for pedestrians and there's none and, and as the development goes on for Minoki down Minoki um, you know as Cindy mentioned it's dangerous for us to even walk or ride our bikes on that street and even the minimal requests that we've made for speed bumps on Minoki hasn't come through with um, the township so you know speed bumps sidewalks down Minoki or proper trails all the way down, not just where the development is. It would have to be from Highway 11 all the way down to the end of Thompson Crescent to make it safe. And none of that has happened. And so now you're coming out with the same provisions again, same suggestions again of connecting, but I don't think have any concept of reality of what that area is like. I'd like you to drive down there to actually take a look um, because these are not roads that are set up for heavy traffic or, or vehicle traffic. Um, they are people's back in people's backyards. And, um, you know, we've, we've gone through this for before. I feel like at the same time, you know, back to the future. And, you know, it's a very unfortunate that, you know, I don't think any of the previous studies were looked at. We actually retained uh, Crozier um, and Associates to do a study last time. Nothing has changed significantly from the connections we're talking about. Uh, Fogel Rubinoff and Michael Slan has put in his comments as well, provided a very detailed letter as well. Um, and, um, you know, we had a petition. Well, if you need another petition, we'll get it. But nobody on our streets want to be connected with the other streets. And it's not a matter if we want to keep things the way they are. It just doesn't make sense. You know, if you're going to spend the money, spend it on fixing up Minoki and making proper um, trail paths for pedestrians so it's safe. You know, not putting you know, school buses and vehicles down small winding country roads where there's only cottagers and some residents living on the street with little kids. It's just, it's dangerous. I think it's irresponsible. I don't think it's a proper way to spend money. Um, there's many other ways that you could use um, uh, resources that would be beneficial to the community and everybody in the community. And um, I think as, an, you know, um, planners, you should be looking into not only looking to the future, but also being sensitive to the existing community. And I, I just think the study misses the mark. And um, I, I ask that you go to our studies. We provided them again. Um, I don't think that any type of um, major resources should be put in connecting these little country winding roads. 
um, put the money into things that will benefit the new development on Minoki. Um, and um, that's where I think the the uh, focus should be. Um, and I'm not commenting on the other areas because I don't know the other areas in Severn. I'm just talking about our specific area. But just again to reiterate that it's dangerous. It would be extremely dangerous to connect all these roads and have traffic going through. I just think it would be irresponsible and dangerous and expensive. So those are my comments. I'd ask that you take into consideration the previous documents, the previous comments that we've made, and I've put them on the teams as well. And so is Michael Slan. The same arguments that we make also hold true for connecting Tom, Big Chief to Thompson, or Thompson to Big Chief. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Robin. And I believe we had Scott. Scott said got his hand up three times. How are you doing today, Scott? <laughs> yeah, did we lose Scott? Oh. There we go. That's better. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, thank you for the presentation. Very informative. Thank you. Appreciate the time. Uh, so I'm Scott Brummel. I'm with Skelton Brummel Associates uh, Consulting Firm in Barrie. I represent a landowner who's, uh, I made a comment already, Mahar owns property at the intersection of uh, near Brody Drive and Carly Online. And we've, uh, uh, we're sort of started into the approval process with the township for a, a site plan on that property. And we certainly are, are cognizant of a desire on behalf of the township and the, through the master transportation plan process to have a road, potential road link that goes uh, sort of uh, east to, or I guess south to north from Carly Online and heads out towards the north and uh, which may affect our client's property. So a um, couple of couple things. What's the timing for completing this study? What's your desired completion date? Uh, I, I think, uh, I mean, I mentioned the, the November this year. So from, okay. from here we are, uh, we're already working kind of like a draft document to package all those um, technical parts and uh, to go through the review with township, then it's going to be presented, uh, I think, the plan in November to the council. OK, uh, OK, good. Um, could I, could I share my screen just quickly? I'll just show you what what our issue, I guess, is. We're, we don't have, we'll make a submission on this later, but I just wanted to bring it up today, at least so you're aware of it. Um, there we go here. Uh, okay, here we go. OK, so. This is a copy of a schedule B1 from the current official plan. And this, this property, this is my, our client's property right here. And they have access, current access, or a 20 meter right away out to Carly Online. They're working on a site plan apposition, or application. We are aware of the desire on this plan to have a, a collector road link that links from Carly on at Brody Drive and heads off in this direction here. So. And we feel the site plan we have right now can accommodate. Uh, uh, we can work with the township to accommodate something there. Um, but with the new plan, uh, where are we here? Here we go. Uh, scale is different, but this, this, our, our client's property is in this area here. And this blue line here appears to follow right sort of straight through the middle of our client's property. So it's, it's no longer offset from uh, or opposite Brody Drive, but it's, it's, it's offset a bit. I think this goes right through the middle of our client's property. In fact, utilizing a, an existing laneway that's there now. So that has a, obviously a pretty major impact on, uh, on what our client can do with that land. And uh, again, he's trying to work forward with a site plan application right now. So we'll want to certainly work with the town on that um, to, um, to uh, get rid of, uh, uh, or sorry, understand what we can do to work with the town and how that can affect our client's property and so forth on that. So. Uh, I guess that's that's a comment I have. Just a heads up, we'll be making a a, a further present or further submission on that to uh, talk further. Well, thank you. thank you very much, Scott. And um, actually, just that does bring a good point to uh, the the group at large. You know, these drawings, these lines, um, they're not exactly you know they're not at the location and scale and detail for construction. Um, these are high level concepts, um, bridging gaps between large communities and areas. Um, they may require expropriation. They may require working with property owners. Um, they'll require a number of more steps than this very, very initial conceptual stage. And so uh, I think it can be appreciated that we've heard a couple of times, you know, there's there's no connection there. Or there's private property there, or, you know, those sorts of things. 
Um, projects don't really ever become real projects and finished until somebody comes up with the idea that solves a transportation gap or, you know, solves a transportation related uh, goal for the municipality. So I yeah, really appreciate it, Scott. We'll certainly take your written comments and uh, and work with the uh, the landowner on those fronts. You're welcome and thanks. Uh, do we have anyone else? Uh, I think the list is pretty much empty unless, uh, Cindy, you have your hand up still, but I think that hasn't been dropped from the last time. Okay. I think that's okay. correct for Cindy. I just took mine down too. Okay, right. Yeah. Okay, um, well that's... How do, how do we make sure, like Cindy mentioned, how do we make sure we don't miss the next meeting? Because we didn't get an email or notice or anything like that. And um, we were a bit taken aback that we missed the first consultation because we would have uh, been very open to, um, you know, giving you our feedback because we've, we've done what, done it before and uh, we'd be happy to participate. So how do we make sure we don't miss uh, you know, I guess the final recommendations um, and then, you know, I, I'm not sure if there's any politicians on the line. I want to know, you know, how if the politicians are allowed to speak to this or are they allowed to be involved at this? Because um, this is political. I think it's a political issue. So I absolutely I see that um, actually Tracy there, our communication specialist here at Severn, um, has provided a, a link and a couple of different ways to subscribe uh, once you're on a mailing list in this particular project you'll automatically get updates and uh, so that'll keep you informed and engaged um, we did have a communications plan for this project and we followed it and it was multiple points of contact so it's really unfortunate we missed you but i'm glad to have you now and uh, and hopefully you can follow along the process the the process definitely includes the uh, elected officials and council and, and members of uh, uh, councillors in the process they've been made aware of the process as it goes but they'll get also more intimately aware of the process as it goes to council for draft review um, hearing from the public and seeing what the uh, transportation you know typical policies and best practices and um, methods of, of providing the best transportation network we can here in Severn uh, is produced to them and they get a chance to review that in detail. And then, and then what happens next? Like, do they have to approve it like at council? Like what happens? Yep, so the, the transportation plan itself um, does need uh, adoption by council and, uh, and that's to adopt them in principle. But once again, each project doesn't mean that it's going to construction. Every project actually is individually approved um, at various other stages, including the project commencement stage. Um, but yes, the, the document itself, the transportation master plan is adopted by council. When does that happen? Our anticipations are to send our first draft and then there'll be possibly many iterations unless it's perfect and then it could be adopted in November. And there's an election between now and November, so you'll have a different council? That's correct. Okay. Thank you. So we have a one more Derek Strickland. Yes, can you hear me? Yeah. Go ahead, please. Okay, thanks. Well, first, thanks for your presentation. Um, I have sort of, I'm, I'm first of all, a resident of Bass Lake Woodlands, which is within Severn Township. Um, and I'm looking at your plans for um, adding sidewalk and multi-use um, trails to the area. And I, I say that's a great idea. Um, I'm particularly interested in, in active transport and trying to promote that. And I see that the um, at least the sidewalks will lead to uh, the Marchmount School. Um, I guess it's okay. I mean, those streets are pretty quiet anyway. They almost don't need sidewalks, but, but to allow young children to walk safely, I suppose it's a good idea to have sidewalk. I'm going to say that um, I'd like to see more bikers going as well using that pathway and um, that route, I shall say. So, I mean, maybe in terms of the dollars spent, it's not worth making it into a multi-use trail through the community there. But I'm just saying that, that, that that's really something that needs to be considered. We need to move forward 
strongly in active transport. And the best way to encourage that is to get the children actually up and running in terms of uh, using their, their feet or their, their um, bikes or whatever to get themselves to school. And along that same line, I noticed that the proposal was for division, no, sorry, Wayman line uh, to have a multi-use trail and, and division road, which will go right past the school. That's great. But then for some reason, you're not taking it the other direction along division road uh, over to, I'm, I'm thinking of linking it to the Utah trail, which again, from an active transport recreational point of view would be a brilliant stroke. Uh, and my final comment is, has anybody given any thought to paving the Utah Trail to uh, link it up ultimately to, to the highly successful Tay Shores Trail? Thank you so much for those comments. Um, we, we hear actually a couple of things might, might be able to address right now. Um, Division Road following or I guess sort of easterly to um, let's say Burnside Line and the Utah Trail does have a proposed shoulder um, bike lane. So what it would be is a paved shoulder rural roadway. I think what the transportation um, best practices were that we were kind of in a in a community, right? So the Bass Lake Woodlands is actually Marchmont um, settlement area. And within the confines of the settlement area, it made sense to have, uh, you know, limited options of, of multi-use. And then as soon as you leave the settlement area, those longer stretches, you're unlikely to see very much pedestrian activity, but certainly cycling facility. So there is a connection. It just might not have been shown on that map very well, um, all the way to the Utah Trail. And then we did hear a number of comments in our first round of public comment on the paving of the cycling trail that is Utah Trail. Um, we have uh, looked at that and we'll be continuing to look at that in the draft. There are some concerns. Uh, it is a multi-year round used uh, trail, which has a number of different users on it, including a snowmobile club. Um, so it's difficult to to select the best uh, surface type, but we certainly heard that loud and clear in the first round. I will say that I spoke with, um, if I may say, on that point of <clears throat> the snowmobile possibly use possibly being a problem uh, for the uh, pavement. I heard from, uh, I think it was a Tay Shores, um, I'm sorry, I don't know his name, but he works for the township and he, he is sort of the manager of uh, trails. Uh, anyway, he said that he found that, that they really see, have not seen damage from the carbide tips. I, I maybe I got the name wrong, but from snowmobiles. And his <clears throat> recommendation would be that snowmobiles continue to use um, a paved trail, but, but when they come up to intersections, uh, where they will have to necessarily rev their their whatever <laughs> propels the <laughs> snow snowmobile that they deliberately move off the paved section and and cross the intersection that way. Um, and he he said he had actually that the township of that the town maybe it's a city of Midland um, has experience in that regard as well. So I mean I. I at first, I was very discouraged when I when I thought, well, we can't really co-use with the snowmobiles, but apparently we can. Certainly, and we'll we'll take those comments, and we really appreciate them today. Thank you for uh, for coming to the pick. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Really good. Do we have Robin again? I think. Uh, oh, Robin. Yeah, my, my final comment was, can the can council accept part of the plan and reject part of the plan or do they have to accept the whole thing? OK. I, I'll probably put that to the consultant, but I believe there would be some revisions to the plan required. The plan acts as kind of one unit and uh, would have cost estimates and plans and priorities all based on the, the, the grand scope, if you will. Uh, so I think it would probably come back for revision. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. And again, this is a uh, just study uh, with uh, at this stage uh, potential uh, needs for potential improvements. Uh, it can be uh, done uh, over phases, or at least, uh, as you can see, uh, not done. Uh, as Eric said, each of these uh, in order to be implemented. Uh, again, there was a couple uh, mentioned uh, safety and all those things, uh, sight lines and so on. Some of these improvements will need to be uh, 
other areas needs to be uh, improved or build up to the standards in order to this happen. So uh, just kind of like to, to understand, for example, for, to connect one of these point A to B, uh, we understand issues with traffic or sidewalks prior to that connecting point. So that needs to be addressed, uh, implemented uh, before uh, implementing this any of these links. So it's not just kind of like, uh, as you can see, as we said, as a sketch here to connect uh, these missing gaps, so other area improvements needs to happen to to uh, be in place too. So it's really the for the study purposes and uh, for the future plans. I think those are. Uh, is there anyone else uh, that would like to speak or have raised hand in this? I think that's it, and it's good timing. It's 4.30, so we'll take a small break, and we will be back for session two. I think it's at, uh, what time does that start there, Mohamed? 4.45, and again, 4 we will have, yeah. we have right the back same, to it. <laughs> yeah, which is good. I mean, we are so happy to see the the really the big turnout here, and that's, that's the point. Uh, 4.45, and it will be the same presentations, everything same, uh, you know, you're welcome to stay, or... So we accept more people again for second round with the same everything. And all those questions, we have recorded everything and, uh, you know, uh, we will go through them uh, and comments. Thank you again. Thank you, everybody. So we'll, we'll stay here, mid, uh, we'll just kind of like uh, take break, 15 minutes.
Okay. Not sure if Mohammed's available. Mitch. I just saw him here. I'm not sure uh, where he made it to. It's okay. It was a pretty short break in between two sessions there. <laughs> <laughs> it was short. Oh, hi, Judith. Hey, how you doing? Great. I'm going to put my lips on seal. <laughs> well, whatever you prefer. <clears throat> well, in case my dog barks or something. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. I'm back here. All right. Mm. So the project team is back. So everybody's ready to go after a relatively short break. <laughs> yeah, I think that we have a we have mm, that's a really good good uh, meeting, good discussion, good uh, work of residents show up, which is really good. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. So this uh, we got a couple of new ones, so we'll We'll kick it off. So, uh, thanks everybody for joining. This is the I call it the uh, the evening uh, shift of the transportation master plan update, public Info information center number two. And uh, today we have with us Mohammed, Mitch, and Soha from uh, Macintosh Perry, who will go through a presentation. And this is uh, number two in our step of public engagement and looking for a draft transportation master plan here in the fall. Thank you, uh, uh, Derek. So uh, again, welcome everyone, and thank you for for your time and uh, you know uh, interest in this uh, project, this study. Uh, so uh, we are here uh, to really listen. Uh, you had opportunity if you uh, managed to go through this uh, presentation or boards uh, from the link uh, that was posted on on the township website. Everything is the same, and uh, can like uh, you can uh, <clears throat> ask questions. I think the idea is we go through the presentation. You can type questions here in the chat, uh, and uh, and after presentation we will have that uh, session for uh, really uh, to ask questions. Same what you probably you can option to write it or again ask uh, uh, through the conversation. Move, can you move to the next? Uh, so just to mention that uh, this session as uh, same like previous one and the previous what we had uh, as pre per public meeting uh, in March first one is recorded. So uh, during presentation, please uh, can I can just uh, mute your microphone so there are any echoing or things. And uh, <clears throat> uh, I did say this question will be after the presentation. Uh, you can provide a question anytime during study after presentation through the chat. Uh, so uh, we are really welcoming any comments, questions uh, related to this uh, study project. And uh, next uh, pitch. Uh, just to go through the uh, little bit intro and the background about uh, transportation master plan. 
uh, some of these was mentioned at the previous uh, meeting, at first meeting. Uh, so what is the One Transportation Master Plan? It's uh, really the, uh, just would like to mention that this is, call it update, because uh, uh, Township had uh, previously done Transportation Master Plan. So typically, uh, this is long-term strategy or planning document that uh, help uh, uh, Township uh, with their plans, uh, with planning uh, through the other documents, not only transportation master plan, documents like official plan and some other uh, master plans. Uh, and uh, to uh, really to look for the growth, expansion uh, uh, and the future uh, with this multimodal transportation system, multimodal meanings, uh, everything, cars, uh, active transportation and different modes of transportation, uh, transit, uh, uh, in the long future, or how you know if uh, any transit from a, a neighboring municipalities or from county. So everything is it's, it's kind of like a part of this transportation master plan uh, in general as document. And uh, this is the I said planning document uh, or a strategic document uh, uh, policy that uh, uh, align with uh, growth and other documents policies and view vision for the future. So uh, to look for the uh, how to accommodate uh, um, growth and uh, employment, population, and everything. Uh, we have to follow as part of the, you know, to go through the study transportation master plan, uh, follow the steps uh, in, um, described or prescribed or directed by uh, um, municipal policies. Uh, it's called municipal class environmental assessment. Uh, part of this transportation master plan or in general transportation master plan is uh, to go through the uh, first two phases of municipal class environmental assessment. So the uh, transportation master plan phase one and two uh, is kind of like covered in, in this study. So in case uh, that uh, Severn identifies some projects, uh, some projects depends again of the, of the, uh, of the uh, size of the project, cost, and so on, uh, they may go through the phase three and four and five of the municipal class EAs, which is kind of like individual uh, separate project, one project uh, through the municipal class EA for the preliminary detail design, and after that again in, in the construction. So it is the process, but uh, by doing this transportation master plan, uh, including this consultation, uh, we uh, meet those phase one and phase two of that the entire process uh, to, to the uh, looking at the planning stage to the potential in the future in, in the number of years for one individual project uh, design and construction. So it is a first step in the whole that process that takes uh, sometimes over 10 years. And uh, it, this process requires minimum two points of contacts, which was two points of consultation public engagement, uh, stakeholder engagement. And so that's why we are, this is the second public information center or second point of the contact. And uh, we uh, we welcome all comments and input uh, through the entire study from beginning to the end. So the plan, uh, master process or the master planning process uh, I did mention uh, has uh, those phases and uh, the, our study is organized through these uh, phases kind of like to, to, to uh, best meet those requirements. So in first phase of this study, what we already did, and that's typically what is part of the master plan, it's when we look what are the issues, what are the problems, we call it opportunities, kind of like almost uh, don't like to, uh, we identify those uh, opportunities, what is need for potential uh, improvement, uh, immediately in the future and based on, on the, all those growth. Uh, we looked at all background information, previous transportation master plan, other policies, so official plan, all other planning, pro, uh, other studies. It can be other, for example, active transportation master plan if it's done or recreational master plan or something, all other planning uh, that they relate to this. And uh, we, then we identify those, what are those problems and opportunities for improvements to address it, to recommend it. In phase two of the study, we look uh, what are the potential solutions, what to do uh, with this, what was it that needs some uh, further uh, improvements or recommend for, for uh, further studies. 
Uh, then we go through the process to evaluate them based on some uh, uh, technical criteria that they are again uh, industry uh, kind of like typical technical criteria. I will uh, go through that. Then we, uh, as part of transportation master plan, uh, it's kind of like uh, implementation strat strategy, how it will be implemented, how it will be, uh, you know, designed, how it will be constructed one day or or uh, what are the kind of requirements and, and there is always uh, of course uh, how it's going to be funded uh, paid for that cost so we are currently here as it's shown uh, under phase two uh, PAs public meeting two and after this uh, uh, we uh, we're working on the kind of like packaging all this uh, work what we've done so far uh, technical work uh, assessment uh, uh, studies to have draft transportation master plan and go through the kind of like a couple of submissions to the township staff to obtain comments, uh, refine it, and uh, put it in the, in the draft and final document. Uh, uh, if everything work, works well after this uh, and putting this document, the idea is kind of like somewhere in November to have the final uh, transportation master plan. Uh, presented to the council for adoption. Next. Uh, public engagement, stakeholder in, engagement, and all interested uh, parties as part of studies are always, uh, we uh, uh, encourage you to provide comments to, uh, uh, it can be through the, you know, uh, direct website. There are all contacts uh, of project team. Uh, this is the one of the way to uh, after this presentation to attend these meetings and uh, follow the any further notices on the on the website uh, of the future uh, status of the project and also you can find the previous public meeting uh, or boards and uh, for public meeting one that we had uh, they are also uh, posted on the township uh, website so uh, please uh, ask questions or try to uh, uh, follow the, you know, uh, any uh, further notices or uh, any other informations on the posted on the website. Uh, back to the public meeting uh, one, uh, we would like just kind of like summarize, highlight key comments. There was a, a number of residents and uh, interested. Uh, uh, stakeholders attending first public meetings. A uh, couple of comments we just summarized here. A few uh, was about uh, really uh, a lot of these sidewalks uh, uh, plans. We will also talk in our this presentation about sidewalks or some recommendations for those active transportation improvements, uh, uh, missing links, uh, uh, bike facilities. Uh, so the, a lot of discussion was even in, in, in today earlier about this uh, Manoki Beach Road areas. Uh, for the some uh, uh, kind of like lack of uh, or safety issues, uh, lack of uh, area for for pedestrians, or uh, also the uh, need for trail uh, near Manaki Beach Road. Uh, some comments, uh, you know, uh, that can enhance safe uh, transportation for the people walking, which is again. Uh, so when we say addressed in TMP, we look those comments when we uh, were on the site, what are the issue? We look also what our potential uh, can like uh, can be a recommendation for address this to improve uh, or recommend for the, you know, uh, in some uh, future projects or the plans that the township can uh, look further. Uh, settlement areas like cold water and West Shore uh, you know, there are some developments are coming in the area in the near future. There are some of them are already uh, ongoing. So what are the kind of like uh, mm, some plans that uh, township can work with developers? Uh, uh, for example, some access points, exit commuters that can get into uh, out of the highways. So there is a lot of uh, the comments that we received and there are good comments. So uh, everything it's uh, we look uh, some of these comments, how to, uh, you know, during our study uh, from uh, since we received the comments, looking technical requirements that we consider, you know, <clears throat> in our recommendations. Next. <clears throat> and uh, a little bit about the objective of this, I already mentioned uh, this meeting. It's really to uh, provide update where we are with the study. Uh, obtain feedback 
look after these uh, feedback comments and uh, all where we are in the, uh, this project. Uh, if any changes or can kind of like um, modifications to the potential recommend recommendations, uh, we uh, how they align and uh, with uh, township vision and goal and uh, to put everything together uh, in, the, in the draft document and the final document. And we are here also to answer questions about the study and uh, uh, any anything else that you would like to kind of like share with us related to the this uh, project, this study. Mohammed, sorry, I think you're on mute. Sorry, I touched the the. So I'm not sure. I will start from beginning. Uh, official plan. Why we are bringing this or mentioning this is uh, I mentioned that transportation master plan is the one uh, kind of like one study or the one document in overall other uh, important planning documents that means uh, that uh, township uh, is undertaking. Uh, transportation master plan as component or as transportation is always or will be part of the official plan update. So it's really important that they are going uh, uh, at the same time parallel update. So there are some sessions, uh, some uh, uh, open house on Wednesday uh, next week. Uh, uh, if you would like to uh, attend that, that's also good. Uh, uh, it's our recommendation because uh, you know uh, both documents, official plan is kind of like higher uh, planning document. It's good to be involved and provide input and to learn more uh, about uh, not only transportation or these type of plans. Through the official plans, you will learn uh, some other plans uh, and the growth uh, and how to, co to accommodate growth. So more details you can find on this link. And if any questions, you can ask uh, us or uh, uh, we will direct you to the project team from uh, uh, working on the official plan update. Next. Uh, objective of this study uh, of transportation master plan is really the, to look for the enhanced transportation uh, network. So to look for township uh, uh, really the, vi the vision and the goal to the growth, to accommodate that growth and uh, you know uh, to enhance livable communities, you know, that will be supported through the economic development. Uh, there is tourism involved. Uh, there is uh, Severn is a <clears throat> tourist attraction too. And the sustainable transportation practices. Uh, so it is smaller community, smaller township, but however, it's not far uh, or it is part of that, as we will mention, uh, Golden uh, or the uh, greater Toronto area. So uh, it uh, doesn't look so far from uh, everything, uh, mm, the, all those growth in the area. So uh, we will take through the, all those separate uh, section of the study uh, that we look the road classification, uh, look for the road improvements, paving surfaces, dead ends, and so uh, potential uh, improvement with regard to well, we identify number of these gaps that can like uh, township may be focus or recommend for the future project to uh, how to address those gaps. It can be road network or it can be uh, also uh, trails or uh, or improvement with regard to some of the road network or active transportation facilities. And uh, definitely this is the uh, uh, aggregate uh, area, a lot of trucks, uh, heavy traffic, uh, uh, commercial uh, traffic over there. So uh, this uh, study looked also for those, uh, is there need for any changes with, rec with regard to the truck routes? Uh, there are a number of them across the township. So we also look for uh, those corridors. And uh, so that's overall kind of like goal of this transportation uh, uh, master plan. <clears throat> growth, uh, uh, you will heard a lot uh, through the presentation, it's growth. Uh, so um, typically uh, transportation master plan is done uh, or it's good to update it every five to six years. So this is another update, uh, which always look for the 
changes or how to accommodate new plants, new growth. It's not only the township of seven growths, uh, growths and, and plants, it's uh, you have to look at how the neighborhood and uh, neighboring municipalities, uh, counties and provinces growing and, and moving and uh, implementing. Uh, that it's really uh, and how uh, Severn also can be part of that and it's already part but uh, you know these transportation master plans and other uh, planning studies have to be in line with other uh, provincial and regional uh, planning documents. So uh, overall I mentioned the uh, region is growing uh, uh, Cinco County it's uh, getting close to 1 million by 2051 by population and uh, in general, there is about 1.5% growth per annum uh, through the next uh, 29 years. So uh, growth is uh, anticipated. So these studies or this, uh, there will be many of these uh, updates uh, up to, to 2051 uh, to accommodate that growth, not only uh, this one. Transportation master plan. So the, <clears throat> As part of kind of like next phase of this project, what we did, we look for these uh, uh, forecast uh, based on the existing road network, based on the uh, existing uh, capacity issues, volumes, uh, commercial uh, uh, vehicles, uh, uh, new development, and how we uh, kind of like look for that 2041 uh, uh, traffic volumes, capacity issues. Uh, applying that growth, how the this transportation master plan will talk, uh, what of these corridors may need improvement, uh, at what stage, some of them uh, may need uh, before 2041, some of them uh, uh, are, you know, the, depends of the, of the capacity of the location or, or attraction or the proposed future developments may uh, kind of like remain pretty much uh, uh, not the same, but need some different type of improvements. And uh, so we look uh, in, in the phases, typically look for all those kind of like 10 years periods for uh, transportation master plans, because those are kind of like high level, larger uh, area studies for 26, 31 and 41. So some of, as I mentioned, some of these improvements may need uh, to be implemented earlier or recommended earlier or be planned or to look for the financial part or cost uh, at early stage. Uh, again, it will be revisited again with future transportation master plan, same like we look for the previous one uh, uh, and then uh, go through the implementation, uh, depends of, uh, of uh, importance and uh, capacity issues. Thanks. Uh, as part of analysis, we did screenline analysis in technical terms, it's kind of like, you know, we, we split, uh, I mean, kind of like we, we look for entire township uh, those major corridors, major uh, areas of, of uh, travel attractions uh, and put those screen lines so that we can capture uh, the major corridors and major uh, traveling uh, directions, uh, north, east, uh, north uh, south, east, west. So just to look uh, based on the volume, based on, on the travel, uh, where there are potential uh, capacities uh, through this corridor. So it's just for our uh, uh, purpose of the study, we pretty much, I think, covered the entire uh, major corridor to see uh, how and how many uh, vehicles and what type of vehicles are traveling through these uh, screen lines. Uh, and based on that, we look for the mm, improvements for some of these roads. Uh, in addition to the just kind of like the not only kind of like road corridors, uh, in coordination with uh, uh, township staff, uh, we look for uh, key areas or key intersections or key uh, concerns uh, for a little bit more uh, in-depth uh, studies. What you see here are those kind of like uh, well, I think a number of intersections that we went uh, and look for potential issues. It can be issues, you know, operational number of collisions need for uh, kind of like upgrades to the traffic control. Uh, uh, for example, maybe warrants that if there is no stop signs or if there is stop signs, is there warranted based on the capacity or based on the group? Uh, or when that needs to be implemented 
for example, if it's always stopped, that it's uh, based on the on the warrants, uh, number of vehicles, number of pedestrians, or number of collisions, uh, that it's needed to recommend for signalization. So we'll look a uh, number of these uh, intersections, and it will be all presented through our project. And some of them we will touch through the this study, uh, just potential improvements, recommendations like traffic signals. Uh, as part of almost kind of any transportation study, we always look for the and safety is uh, um, number one uh, in, in everything. Uh, so we look for collision uh, history or collision uh, areas uh, through the the major uh, through the entire uh, township. What we could obtain typically, we look for the five year collision data. And uh, the goal is really to look collision history to identify some of these uh, areas that may have uh, a larger number of collisions. Then we look kind of like uh, uh, what type of collisions, uh, and uh, based on that, you know, some recommendation may be uh, based uh, how to uh, address that to reduce or eliminate completely collision. It's not just part of this study that uh, uh, you know the. Township may take individual study or work with, let's say, if it's a, a county intersection or close to the provincial road, and work with other jurisdiction uh, to address some of these safety concerns. So, but it's uh, we did look also safety uh, and collision assessment. Uh, growth urbanization and. Uh, township is growing. There is, uh, you know, more people are moving uh, to the. Uh, the area you see in the new subdivisions uh, in the area. So, uh, you know, uh, growth is anticipated, but however, township is, uh, you know, it's still will take some time to get there that it's more, uh, you know, that's, you can say, uh, really uh, intensification, urbanization, and so on. It's still a, a primary settlement area. Aggregate production is really uh, still number one, and it's uh, a key economic uh, uh, power of the entire township. So uh, we understand, uh, we we recognize, and we look for those heavy vehicle traffic. Uh, some concern these corridors, uh, uh, um, whole road. We look for them. They over time they they change uh, along this corridor. There's maybe more residential. So there are some concern. We look in those uh, whole roads. Uh, is there potential for uh, address some of these concern? Maybe recommend some uh, new corridor. So as part of this study, we look for that. It may not be changes, but we look uh, how uh, or when maybe maybe need to address some of these uh, heavy vehicle traffic. Uh, multimodal. I mentioned that active transportation. It is. Uh, uh, as we all uh, see more and more, it's a uh, focus on those healthy communities, more uh, activities, uh, particularly it came through the COVID time that we learned a lot of things, but it's for some time now uh, uh, in order to, uh, in, in addition to those uh, car uh, and vehicular uh, or road network improvements just for the roads, now we are looking for the improvements to accommodate more cyclists, uh, more uh, pedestrians, connectivity, more safe. So you will see a number of these recommendations through our study. Um, it is also talking about how to improve these connections or uh, um, to make it, for example, when opportunity comes uh, to resurface road, to widen a little bit, to accommodate maybe even paved shoulder. It's also uh, some jurisdictions are doing that with uh, new rehabilitation projects trying to have more uh, paved shoulder that can be, it's not bike lane, but again, it's more safe biking if it's a little bit wider. So some of these uh, are now, uh, you know, uh, across the board, looked for uh, more safe pedestrians and cycling activities uh, uh, for uh, improvements. Uh, we look for the alternatives as part of these steps or the process. Uh, as always, we always, uh, as part of transportation master plan uh, and uh, a, a municipal uh, environmental assessment, uh, look for a number of solutions. Uh, that's the process. Comparing to this, really, uh, how uh, what would be if we don't do anything? Uh, you know, uh, uh, 
the status quo. Uh, then we can like identify a couple of these uh, alternatives to look, uh, you know, uh, look just focus more on their own network strategy uh, or to look uh, on the higher level and focus on the multimodal network strategy. There can be more other alternatives or solutions, but just kind of like to go through the study, we, we can like focus more on this. Uh, our recommendation or to, uh, you know, to say uh, at this stage uh, preferred a solution is really to focus more on the road network strategy, uh, invest on local traffic operations improvements, uh, you know, address some of these gaps in the road, in active transportation network trails, uh, still focus and look for those uh, uh, whole roads, uh, heavy traffic, what I said, there is a, a still an uh, uh, aggregate area, uh, and uh, mm, how to address that and work to, to make it more safe, uh, to make it better at this stage, and uh, prioritize those activities, those projects, including active transportation, uh, uh, sidewalks, uh, paved shoulders, missing links, uh, trails, and so on. Uh, so that's, again, uh, kind of like recommendations to, to focus uh, as a preferred as part of this study. Uh, when time scan, uh, comes, uh, you know, we, we will never forget it's now multimodal, as we said, looking for everything, but, you know, it's getting a, a township growth and more urbanized can be probably look further uh, on the next TMP or next one that will also more, uh, you never know, transit will come and so on. So that's a little bit more future. So our focus is on preferred is road network strategy. Uh, Evaluation went through these criteria. I mentioned them, but we always looked, uh, you know, those criteria are not only kind of like transportation and car. So there are policies, there are economic uh, uh, or the cost, uh, there is impact on environment and uh, social, uh, socioeconomic environmental impact. So what it means, uh, it's uh, in evaluating these or recommending some of these recommend uh, solutions, we look really technical transportation, you know, how to improve all those, what you were talking about, you know, how to move people, goods uh, safely around, uh, improve connectivity uh, and each of these solution, uh, you know, uh, that's one kind of like criteria to say, yeah, based on transportation, all these technical needs, uh, yeah, this is recommended and, and uh, prioritized. But there are policies also, the provincial policies, regional, the county policies, uh, so how it fits with other planning policies, how this recommendation may also maybe be a kind of like a, a good opportunity to uh, look for those provincial or other funds to implement that. So how it's going to be paid. So everything is, uh, you know, we have to look through that through the evaluation. Uh, economic uh, cost, I uh, say that, and uh, how this uh, recommendations or how in phases may be uh, recommended to implement so that the township can work and, and plan for the future uh, capital projects or work for those fundings, what I said, or through the development charges, how these projects uh, can be uh, uh, implemented and uh, uh, some of them uh, that move forward. Environmental, any of these recommendations, again, what is their impact? Uh, is there impact of the uh, building that road, widening that road, uh, environmental? So each of these projects uh, will go uh, if, you know, advance to the that level uh, uh, to throw the assessment, uh, what is their uh, potential uh, environmental impact, uh, you know, environment, is there any crossings, for example, or impact on natural environment. So that's also one of the criteria that it's looked always and socio-economic environmental. So uh, how everything what we are recommending is, is fitting into those uh, other plans, uh, developments and so on. Uh, and next slide, Mitch. Uh, I think I pass this to you now. So I will pass yeah. to Mitch to take us through the uh, few slides. Thank Great. Uh, thanks, Mohammed. Uh, good evening, everybody. Um, so moving forward with our preferred alternative, the road network strategy, um, we've identified a number of road network improvements and modifications. Um, they primarily consist of new roads, road widening, surface type upgrades, and local uh, improvements like signalization. 
So the map on the left here, it just shows a high level overview of all of our recommendations, um, as well as uh, some of the planned new roads as part of uh, future developments. So in terms of the recommendations that, or at least some of the recommendations that we're providing um, specifically as part of this TMP, um, there are a number of intersections that uh, warrant signalization. So Sturgeon Bay Road at Coldwater Road, um, we anticipate this intersection will uh, warrant signalization by uh, 2031. The intersection of Burnside Line at Division Road, um, this intersection currently already warrants uh, traffic signals. And then we've also identified a potential location for a mid-block pedestrian crossing within the vicinity of the Coldwater Public School um, that would just allow for safer pedestrian uh, crossing uh, of Gray Street and then have sort of minimal impacts on, uh, on traffic. So currently within the, um, the township, there's a number of dead end roads. Um, we're recommending um, providing connections between those dead ends. Um, so between Bayou Road and Amigo Drive, between Amigo Drive and Wood Avenue, uh, Minoki Beach Road to Thompson Crescent, and Cox Road to Hawkins Drive. Um, we're also recommending um, an extension of West Street and Coldwater um, up to County Road 17. So we've also identified a number of roadways um, that are currently gravel surfaces. However, um, based on the volume of traffic, they're warranted for upgrades to um, asphalt. So Laughlin Falls Road between Taylor Line and Upper Big Shoot Road, and then Mashadash Street at County Road 16. Um, the lane, it's uh, currently a two-way road. Uh, however, the, the road's fairly narrow uh, with approximately five meter right-of-way. So we're recommending converting this road into a, a one-way, um, just maintaining northbound traffic. In terms of road widening, uh, we're recommending widening Gray Street um, just to allow for on-street parking and then a bike lane uh, near River Street. Uh, Michael Ann Drive and Gill Street, we're also recommending for widening uh, just to facilitate sidewalks and cross-section urbanization. Um, one of the, the more significant uh, recommendations we're making that would require uh, quite a bit of consultation with MTO um, is the realignment of Highway 11 between New Braley Line and South Sparrow Lake Road um, and a service road uh, that would allow access into uh, West Shore. Um, so currently there's a high number of right in right out accesses uh, off of the highway into West Shore. Um, typically we want to avoid accesses like this on a freeway um, for safety reasons. So um, the realignment of the highway and the new service road would just allow for uh, safer access into West Shore. Um, so currently the township doesn't have any emergency detour routes and uh, based on the, the road network, there's fairly limited opportunities to implement them. Um, we did identify uh, one possible location for Highway 11 um, that would just be along Agnew Road between South Sparrow Lake Road and Shoreview Drive. So um, separating heavy vehicle traffic from the, the rest of heavy, uh, from the rest of traffic, um, and especially um, for pedestrian traffic is, is a primary goal for this, uh, this TMP. Um, so currently the township um, has quite a few uh, north-south um, haul routes already, uh, and only one east-west uh, route, uh, which is along Cambrian Road. Um, so really we wanted to look for um, opportunities to provide an additional east-west haul route that would allow direct access to Highway 12. Um, so we looked at a number of options. We looked at Warminster Road, um, Division Road, Division Road down to Fairgrounds Road. Um, and all of these options um, had quite a few drawbacks. So our preferred uh, east-west connection um, would be along Thorburn Road from uh, Nelson Aggregate uh, to Highway 12. Uh, this would require um, building a new road from Wayman Line to Highway 12 and would also require um, building within the township of Ora Medante. So moving on to active transportation, um, active transportation just refers to any active mode of travel, so primarily walking and cycling. Um, active transportation, it's still, a, it's still a significant focus of this TMP um, with our primary goal uh, looking for connections uh, between the primary settlement areas and to the Utah Trail. So we've proposed a number of uh, active transportation network improvements uh, based on um, our review of the existing township active transportation facilities, 
um, the anticipated future growth, uh, identifying key locations such as schools, community centers, employment hubs, commercial areas, and recreational or tourism areas. And then identifying all the existing and the future active transportation gaps. So for on-road cycling, um, there's a number of uh, different facility types um, that just depend on the roadways, uh, traffic volume, operating speeds, um, and its environment, whether it's urban or rural. So for rural roads, typically we'd be looking at paved shoulders, uh, buffered paved shoulders, or signed bike routes. Um, for urban areas, uh, typically we're looking at conventional bicycle lanes, so it's just a, a lane dedicated, dedicated to cycling. So the map, uh, map here just shows our, our recommended on-road cycling network. Um, it's a combination of uh, signed bicycle routes, paved shoulders, and a few um, uh, traditional bike lanes. So the primary signed bike route uh, was established by MTO as part of the province-wide cycling network and it essentially runs uh, from the Utah Trail along Cambrian Road to South Sparrow Lake Road, and then also to County Road 52 and out of the township. And there's also a connection on Caroline Line, a uh, south to Division Road. For paved shoulders, um, we're looking at Division Road um, from Wayman Line to the Telford Line overpass, uh, Souls Road, and then up to Minoki Beach Road. Um, we're also looking at paved shoulders for Caroline Line, uh, south of Division Road. Uh, down to Brody Drive, and then an off-road bike path and new sidewalk connection from uh, Burnside Line um, into the city of Aurelia. So for cold water, um, we're looking at conventional bike lanes uh, from Sturgeon Bay Road, um, sorry, on Sturgeon Bay Road from the Utah Trail Access Point, um, past River Street and onto Gray Street, and then also along uh, Coldwater Road. Um, River Street, we're recommending as a signed bike route um, north up to County Road 17, and then Quarry Road would be a uh, paved shoulder up to St. Uh, Amart Road, which would be a signed bike route again out of the uh, out of the township. So for Wishago, um, we're recommending a, a traditional bike lane um, on Muskoka Street uh, within like the built up commercial area with the remainder of Muskoka Street um, as a paved shoulder up to County Road 52. So in terms of the off-road active transportation network, uh, this primarily includes sidewalks and multi-use pathways. Um, we've identified a number of locations that would benefit from the um, added uh, pedestrian safety provided by sidewalks. And we base this off of um, a priority system. So um, high priority areas, these are areas with uh, higher than average number of vulnerable road users. Uh, so within the vicinity of schools, trails, community centers, commercial areas. Um, medium priority areas, uh, these are areas uh, which still have uh, pedestrian activity um, and they're within the vicinity of uh, high traffic volume roads, where low priority areas, again, um, there is some pedestrian activity, but they're within the vicinity of uh, low volume roads. So looking at cold water, um, there's currently already a few existing sidewalks, um, but we are recommending uh, a new sidewalk on the north side of Sturgeon Bay Road between uh, the Utah Trail and River Street, um, sidewalks on Brick Pond Road, Wiley Street, um, George Street, Michael Ann Drive, Shaw Street, and Gill Street. Um, the sidewalks shown here and this multi-use pathway, these are part of a, a future development, um, but we are recommending extending uh, the Utah Trail um, at Fire Hall Lane up to uh, Gray Street as a new multi-use pathway. So the Utah Trail uh, through Coldwater is um, fairly discontinuous. So there's one access point on Sturgeon Bay Road um, west, and then another one um, just south of Gray Street off of Fire Hall Lane. So we're recommending um, realigning the trail to its previous alignment, um, which kind of ran across the river like this. But uh, we would have to acquire this property here to do that realignment. But it would allow for a continuous uh, trail through the uh, Coldwater. So for West Shore, we're also recommending a number of sidewalks, um, primarily on Lakeside Drive and Bayview Road, with uh, some sidewalks on Highview Avenue and Coronation Avenue, just within the vicinity of the school here. Um, we're also proposing a new multi-use pathway that would just run uh, south from Grand Town Crescent 
down to Minoki Beach Road. Um, part of this would be developed uh, from by a developer. Um, just slightly north of West Shore. Um, again, we're proposing another multi-use pathway that would run north along Goldstein Road, Bayview Road across the highway, and then up uh, South Sparrow Lake Road. And this again would connect to uh, another planned uh, multi-use pathway from the uh, Turnbull Drive development. So Marshmont, um, we're proposing a multi-use pathway um, along Wayman Drive, and then on Division Road, um, past the school here connecting to Wayman Line. And then for sidewalks, we're recommending uh, sidewalks on Marshmont Road that would connect to the existing uh, sidewalk there. And then again on Townline Road, connecting to the, the sidewalks on Marshmont Road. Um, other sidewalks um, to the south of Division Road, along Confederation Drive, up north to Division Road uh, near the school. So for uh, Shago, recommending sidewalks um, on Hamilton Street, and then just continuing the existing sidewalk system on Muskoka Street, south to County Road 169, and then to Quinton Street, south to the, uh, the existing park here. So I think I will turn it over to Mohammed. Thanks, uh, Mitch, uh, appreciate that. Uh, just uh, to move forward, uh, was in the next uh, or the part of the study that we uh, looked uh, back to some of these policies uh, or uh, important for for the township is really to uh, look for some updates in there, uh, you know, uh, up, up to the uh, some latest uh, industry standard. Uh, in this case, for the road classification, we recognize that. Uh, uh, township is uh, mainly uh, uh, rural uh, and uh, in, to using this opportunity as update of transportation master plan uh, recommendation is to uh, be uh, in line with industry guidelines to uh, have these type of roads uh, to align to those uh, industry uh, guidelines as well as some regional or other municipalities uh, uh, roads terminology. Uh, why this is needed, it's also, uh, it's not only transportation master plan and to have this road uh, classification, uh, can like uh, to have it uh, updated. Uh, township is also doing, for example, uh, a road needs study or some other type of studies that uh, this roads uh, or, you know, classifications is very important for, for other studies, for other plans. Uh, so as they propose maintenance of the road. So this classification is based uh, on our recommendation for update. It's really based on, you know, the uh, where these roads are uh, located, uh, volumes, what they connecting, uh, connecting the local communities, connecting uh, uh, more uh, major areas with uh, freeways, highways, or or things like that. So that. Uh, some recommendation are to uh, classify this road uh, a little bit uh, differently uh, to have those arterial collector and local. We recognize that, you know, uh, the most of uh, in township roads are in this urban roadway cross section. So uh, as part of this study, uh, road classification will be uh, updated a little bit. So that's also fit into this transportation component of the official plan so that that terminology is the same. Uh, for other documents. So that's why we brought it here. And uh, based on that, what, what kind of like I said, uh, we recommend a couple of these uh, uh, changes for the uh, road classification uh, to change, for example, a division road to call it, uh, to be classified as an arterial uh, road. Uh, it's long-term uh, plan to for county of Simcoe uh, jurisdiction. So some of these roads, for example, counties in in, a, in under uh, arterial roads are typically uh, in jurisdiction, typically a, in a, a higher jurisdiction in county. So some of these roads may be over time taken uh, or transferred to the county. Uh, but again, one of the steps it's really to to see. Uh, if this road based on the capacity, based on the on the right of way, based on on the volumes, uh, it's really uh, up to this uh, point. Uh, Burnside Lane also to uh, 
were classified, uh, classified to arterial road and some other roads uh, uh, just for the terminology. And uh, again, in the future, as uh, community grows and township grows and uh, needs new developments are coming, some of these roads again may be uh, reclassified. And again, it's based on volumes, based on right of way, based on some roads have sidewalk or don't have sidewalk. So it's all those uh, typical industry standards for classify this road. And uh, <clears throat> as mentioned a number of times, um, some of these recommendation or all recommendation, I mean, they have to uh, as part of evaluation or part of recommendation, it's always to look how uh, how to pay for that. And uh, uh, can uh, we obviously and definitely know that uh, this cost, it's uh, there are different uh, way of, you know, how to uh, um, get financial part of these recommended, some of these recommended projects. It can be through the uh, you know, development charges. Some of these projects are good to, to be identified at this stage of the planning. So to apply for some of the provincial or regional uh, funds for, for example, particularly these days through the COVID, a lot of funds could uh, be uh, obtained through the implementation of uh, active transportation facilities or uh, improvement. So even uh, some other road improvements or some other projects. So the, this is very high level cost at, uh, for transportation master plan. Uh, and uh, in the, well, if these projects are identified as individual projects, they will again go through the, through the process, uh, starting from design and so on, and how it, it can be financed. Uh, the next step of, the, of this study is really uh, to uh, obtain these comments, get feedback. Uh, there is a, some uh, kind of like a time frame that we would like if you can provide comments because we are working on a draft document or draft transportation master plan that will really summarize all these uh, uh, kind of like what we study, what we look from the existing condition to the uh, proposed recommend recommended improvements. And uh, refine preferred solution based on feedback, based on everything. Look for the cost estimate. It's again, high level cost estimate and look for some uh, opportunities, how some of these costs can be uh, covered or sharing costs. Uh, uh, also some of these recommendation uh, as part of transportation road network or the future one. Uh, it's also part of official plan, how it can be also passed or to look for the uh, development charges, how developers can also par uh, pay part of these uh, future uh, identified projects or uh, the improvements. And, uh, you know, package everything and finalize in draft, then in, in final uh, document uh, in going through the October. And uh, the, the idea is to present this to the council uh, for adoption sometime in November. Uh, feedback uh, mentioned a number of times. We are here to listen, to get your comments. To uh, this, it's not stop just this meeting or after the meetings. Uh, we would like to get those next two weeks as much as possible, as we are working on, on the, this kind of draft. But again, comments and input are uh, always welcome, and we are here to uh, you know through different ways through the emails, phones, uh, website to provide us uh, any input and comments. And uh, we will, uh, future steps or uh, any kind of like next uh, steps of this draft and everything, uh, you will be on the list. We will inform everybody, but also you can all the time visit the website of the township website of this project to get more informed. Mm, I think we are to the end. Yeah. And uh, yeah. Uh, Township website, how to get more details. Uh, as I said, uh, we would appreciate uh, kind of like comments uh, as much as possible to receive by September 28, as we would like to kind of like have first draft of this report. And the report will have much more details, uh, you know, uh, in addition to this presentation and the whole background of what we were, uh, were presenting here. And uh, please uh, reach to us at any time. I think we have now uh, a time that we would like to hear more questions from you. And uh, uh, just please uh, kind of like, uh, 
raise the hand and we will uh, kind of like pass to you and uh, listen what you have to comment or provide some feedback. Thank you. Derek, I'll pass to you, but is there any, any comment uh, that you would like to, uh, I've seen a couple kind of like written in the chat, but uh, uh, we'll definitely go through them or, or answer them. But uh, is anyone would like to uh, maybe to to speak or about the same comment or any other comment? Oh, I can see on the right there, uh, Mr. Colson. Dave, how are you doing today? I'm great. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, we're. I'm sorry. We're at 3362 Cox Drive, um, third from the end, uh, to where the proposed area to connect in two is. Uh, again, I said in my statement um, or, or comments that uh, if you know this area at all on Cox and Hawkins is extremely quiet. Uh, it's mostly uh, cottagers. There's there are very few of us that are full time. So as you can imagine, um, kids, grandkids, dogs all roam around. It's bush on the east side all the way along except for one house along the whole entire kilometer. So. Um, being a, a quiet uh, cul-de-sac or dead end road, um, I'm not sure the reasoning is, um, is it just because of a dump or like a plows do want to do a three point turn at the end in the winter time or uh, the garbage pickup doesn't want to do three, um, three point turn in, in the summertime and winter time. I, I'm not sure what, what the reasoning is to connect these two very, very quiet roads. Thank you. I can probably handle. You want me to address this one, uh, Mohammed? <laughs> yes, yeah, if you can. So cer certainly, uh, I've we know the area well. Um, our consultant does as as well. We took them on a nice tour and got to see the nitty gritty of uh, of the bush that you described. Um, but yes, the the transportation network does work best when it's not segmented, and so these are the the basic principles of transportation design. Um, you can imagine that. Uh, a connection may may offer a alternative route out in the event of an emergency or um, you know there was other other reasons why the one way in one way out was obstructed so it is just best planning policies that's why we've continued to make these recommendations year over year or plan after plan just because it it does make um, uh, you know the most sense but uh, certainly appreciate the comment you know the area does it's very rural uh, it's very cottagey and uh, generally speaking, both roads have limited traffic. Uh, thank you for answering that. Um, the other concern I have, I didn't write in the chat, is the the hill on Huffman. Um, we've had times in the past in the winter time where cars can't get up, uh, tow truck vehicles couldn't get up because they're only two wheel drive because of how horrible that hill is, how steep it is, and the condition of the road. Um, I can only imagine if an ambulance, the ambulance would have, a, would have the same, uh, the, the same thing happened to it. It would be stuck on a hill because of uh, the condition of it. Ambulances are on two-wheel drive, just like the tow truck is. So I can imagine that's a way more important to get an ambulance up that hill than than having a plow go through straight through. Thank you. Yeah, cer certainly. Thanks again for that comment too. I mean, that that almost further um, kind of supports the the additional connection, right? To uh, to to that roadway where we already have you know limited access in that area um, and constrained by geometry, uh, particularly vertical geometry. Yeah, thank you very much. I think we have a another NK uh, guest. Uh, Hi. Go ahead, please. Yeah. Hi, hello. Thank you so much for a very informative meeting. I actually listened to both segments and. Um, gathered a lot of information that um, was necessary, I guess, for overall picture of what's been going on in the township as far as planning. So um, my question is, um, in addition to the comments that I've already posted, um, as an owners of the property that will be directly affected by uh, the change, uh, and again, I'm talking about Hawkins Drive being connected to Cox Drive. Um, where do we get more detailed information as far as how much of the property will be affected by it, the timing of the construction? Um, how safe would it be for uh, road users to um, be located on the road that, uh, that will be passing two T off um, 
uh, golf course areas, um, we're finding golf balls all over our front yard. And that's far away from the tee off area. And if you to put the road there, uh, what is planned to be put in for protection of um, road users? So all of those questions, who we can address that to and have uh, perhaps private meeting or private email communication, because details are important. Uh, we are quite, quite concerned about the future of being um, owners at the property that will be changed forever by this change. So yeah, appreciate any of your um, answers and uh, support. <laughs> Yeah, thank you. And uh, Mehmet, I might uh, take a stab at this and then help me along as I go. Yeah. Uh, these projects and this particular study is very high level and conceptual. So um, none of the recommendations of, of this plan kind of immediately go to construction. It's There's a number of steps ahead of that. And uh, one is um, as we build new roads, we have to follow the remaining steps of the municipal class environmental assessment process. Uh, which looks at a number of different aspects, including uh, roadside safety and environmental impact and uh, property acquisition or not, um, that sort of thing. So, Mehmet or Mitch, did I miss any parts of those? Uh... <laughs> no, that's that's the, again, this is the very uh, high level planning study that uh, will look those potential needs that uh, township will take from here and work on, the, on, on implementation. And some of these projects, like you said, uh, may be uh, in phase, so maybe in 10 years to get there. And as, as a community or the area growth and plan for, for, for them. So it is uh, not that you wanna see any of these projects minimum, you know, 10 years from here. But again, you will heard if let's say particular that projects is selected that it's going to go through the financial part. There's going to be another study as that individual project that will go through the municipal class CA. There is going to be uh, again planning study for that particular uh, connection or widening or whatever it is. Uh, then it's going to be design. Then it's going to be for construction. So it takes here. Typically, how I like to say from this kind of like transportation master plan takes minimum 10 years and sometimes to uh, implement larger projects. However, it doesn't mean that, for example, uh, some of those minor improvements cannot be, I'm not talking about building new road or, uh, new road or connection. Let's say uh, widening, uh, when if there is time that municipality already have planned, let's say for resurfacing of the road, maybe to do, uh, put a uh, paved shoulder. So some of these projects may be addressed faster but some of these larger projects they are you know it's long process if it's really carry forward uh, uh, through this study and other studies so uh, there are phases and then the time that from from this time to go to the you know don't don't think it will be in two three years uh, all done in, in many cases some other roads or the roads up to that let's say connection or improvements needs to be uh, uh, improved. So this study identify maybe this is the plan for future improvement, connect that so the developers that's coming in the area, maybe and they also have to count on that so that the township can go and uh, look through some funding through the development charges uh, process. So it's important to identify them so for the future plans, future projects. Yeah. And I think just to add, we have um, in the chat box, I don't know if you can see the chat box, but we give um, some direction on how to stay engaged in this particular study. So you can you can sign up to be part of the uh, registration for comments and registration for updates, and uh, that'll help you keep involved in this particular uh, study, but at a project level, very specifically on Cox and, Huff and uh, Hawkins there, uh, you'll be notified well in advance of any additional uh, progress just via the municipal class EA process. OK, thank you. Thank you. Uh, I think the next I think I see Wanda. Wanda, do you hear us? Hi there. Hope you can hear oh, me. Yes. I can hear you, yeah. 
OK, good. Don't know why my camera's uh, not showing, but anyway, thank you. And I'm sorry that I'm late to the meeting. I had another one that went over, but my um, my question, it didn't come up in the part of the presentation I saw, was around the relationship that um, this plan and I guess this, the township has with MTO when it comes to uh, exit ramps, on ramps, et cetera. Um, on Highway 11, and I'm thinking specifically, uh, I think it covers wards three and four are the ones. We have a lot of feeder streets. It's always been a safety concern, but now with new developments and plans, and I know that the planning cycle takes a long time. I'm just wondering if you could just educate me a little bit about what that relationship's like and whether or not they've been engaged, et cetera. Thank you. Derek, I can just men the mention uh, it's it's an excellent question actually and an excellent point because we show that uh, uh, the, uh, it was a lot of discussion and, and kind of like for us uh, to importance of transportation master plan as a planning document uh, just for that reason to uh, let's say the local community uh, put this particular uh, issue or, or projects, future projects that may be completely done uh, by Ministry of Transportation. But there are, uh, they're going to recognize that as the town of Severn Transportation Master Plan, community or residents uh, see issues and need for improvements along the Highway 11 corridor on these accesses. So uh, Ministry of Transportation will see that it was studied that uh, residents raise concern and they support or looking for improvement. So Minister of Transportation is it's kind of like uh, they are aware they've seen they are uh, they they they've seen this presentation. I mean the the board uh, they are aware to go and and uh, see it. Uh, but how it will be uh, in the future and when they will uh, it's again good sign to them to look to put their on their radar on their plan planning projects that this community. Uh, looking for improvements along this area, so to look for potential, you know, uh, realignment. Of, as we've shown, that is definitely is going to be Ministry of Transportation project. But it's good to good to give them idea what uh, Severn is thinking, how it will help community for the safety, for the access, for everything. Will that be exactly like that? It's again very conceptual. Will they ever consider it in that way? But it's good to say we'll look that. We are asking that now Ministry of Higher Jurisdiction look into those. So yes, they are part of or they are aware of transportation master plan. They've seen this sketch. We contact them before, uh, you know, and how long and when they will be that in the process for not only this, what we've shown here, section of Highway 11. So there is a number of these access points that Ministry will uh, over the years consider for improvements as, as community of the entire area is growing. Yeah. So yeah. Thank you. So well, just a small follow up to what you said, if I could, before I forget, um, from a community advocacy and allies um, lens, so that we're supportive of what the township's doing, et cetera. Um, is there anything that you would recommend that uh, is there a role for the community um, with MTO to also get this on their radar. So as you mentioned, they've seen a presentation, et cetera. I'd just be I, interested in your, your advice on that. I think um, I think some advice I might offer is like our process and study is highly dependent on the public feedback that we get. And in our current comment registry, I think there's only maybe one, maybe two uh, notes on this particular aspect. And like anything, the more notes we can kind of get from the public, the bit stronger of a case we have in our full recommendations to the MTO. So uh, certainly if you have contacts or reach within the community that you know you are aware that the community is aware of these concerns, um, an important part of it all is to send that feedback formally into us so you can get on our comment registry. And you can do that by an email to Mohammed or myself. Um, there's a couple of different ways on the website as well. And uh, of course, we had a survey, but it's now closed. There's lots of opportunities, but we are coming to a close. So if you have a chance to uh, get on that comment registry, even today here in the chat, uh, we'd really appreciate it. 
Thanks, Derek. I will. And those comment two comments are probably mine. Yeah. Fair enough. Because <laughs> those are extremely important because the sovereign as we were back to the cost. Uh, this is one of the area for improvement that province has to do a lot of improvements along that corridor that again mm -hmm. it's impact already the you know the sovereign uh, residents, but the uh, ministry has, as you said, uh, needs this community uh, can we concern and uh, I'm not telling they don't have these projects on their radar, but again, depends. Uh, they mm -hmm. have their priorities and we know that they're, you know, I'm working on a number of projects are along the uh, 400 and Berry area and uh, even their highway 11, 12 area in Aurelia. So ministry is doing project by project and, uh, you know, it's again that they have their planning process and steps, but more these comments and uh, like uh, uh, requirements from the local residents, it, it helps. Yeah. Okay. And how quickly will this be recording be available um, on the website so that I can pull off some of the language that that you you said and you explained, which I'd like to use that in some of the um, the ways we'll get some numbers generated here. Derek, you're a mute. <laughs> Sorry, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think what we we are going to release a draft of the report. And uh, and then we're looking for comments actually up to is it the end of September? Just a couple of weeks, is that right? Yeah, just a couple more weeks, and um, and then we'll be closing to a, a draft to council, which still has opportunity for comment through some different means. But uh, this this method will end at about the end of September. Yeah, but this particular recording. Well, oh, this will be available mm -hmm. right away. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. Yeah, to okay. probably even as early as tomorrow, the following day. Yeah. Thank you. I'll look and, forward. and I also think you can, uh, if you missed the first public meeting, the, they are also there. Just follow the links. Uh, yeah. Thank you. And first uh, presentation for first public meeting too. Yeah. Uh, do we have any other? In addition to Wanda. I think our meeting's going to end in about four or three minutes, so I'll kind of do a final call. Um, if there's anybody left, and I, I just want to thank everybody, of course, for attending our afternoon session or evening session here for the Public Information Center number two. Thank you. That uh, was really great uh, uh, sessions. A lot of good comments, good participation too, so thank you. Okay. That's great. Well, thanks, everybody, and uh, have a good night. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Mitch, can you?